in mind? So I don't really have anything in mind, but as we were just chatting some, um, something just came to mind uh, that maybe we could talk about a little bit and we can go off from there. But um, so the Ten Commandments, right? One of yes. them is translated in English, thou shalt not take the Lord's name in vain, right? So <laughs> some people take that as that don't swear. I mean, that's not what it's saying. Okay. Not at all. Um, I, I, well, okay. What I generally say to people who say that is, is God's name Buck. <laughs> what? Say that again? It, 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 the commandment is not to take the Lord's name in vain. It's the Lord's name Buck. Is the Lord's name shit? Okay. Yeah. Right. Oh, okay. I see what you're saying. <laughs> it's those are completely different words than his name. I guess. <laughs> exactly. It took me a little bit. It's like what? Yeah, Is but that... then calling his name, wouldn't that be in the, uh, like, you know, you hurt yourself instead of saying fuck or shit, and then you say, you know, Jesus Christ, you, and isn't that swearing? That um, might, that would be taking his name in vain, I think, but a little bit. Name uh, in vain. You're, I, I, I would you. ask him not to use the name that way. Um, yeah. But I don't think that that's necessarily breaking the commandment because no, you got to remember that the Hebrew idiom for the name is also the authority. Yeah, um, to come under the to be in to uh, be under the name of Jesus Christ is to be under His authority. So, uh, so for a long time, I have felt that, and I still think this is still part of it. But taking the Lord's name in vain <laughs> is claiming Yahweh said something that He didn't. Yeah, well, um, right, because you're misrepresenting. Yes. So every single so-called leader and prophet in the Mormon church has been doing that same thing for years. And uh, yeah, I, I mean, it's pretty much every mainstream religion now, but yeah, we, we know the LDS one, bringing light one quite well. <laughs> yes. Um, and, also, and also several groups, and also there are groups that do this. Um, yes, Maybe. outside that do this, who claim oh, yeah. that, where their where their people claim to have received a revelation from God. Mm -hmm. Check against the scriptures to realize that whether or not it was from God. Yeah. yeah. Um. I mean, Joseph Smith taught revelation comes from three places: Elohim, ourself, and or man, and mm -hmm. Satan. So you have to check it. I mean, I check the ones I get. And the whole um, thing, the sure. whole thing is, I think the most prevalent one is the second one, the one from man. The one from ourselves is more prevalent, I think. Uh probably. Probably. Or or just other men too. Um, because right. uh I mean, I do believe demons are talking to people. Uh, and but how many comparative to the rest of the society is probably not too many, but I I, I don't know. I'm no expert in this. Area. <laughs> I don't know too much there. You're no expert on demonology? Huh? No. It's, <laughs> it's, Serious? It's not something I've really wanted to, to look into, and at the same time, I've seen some people talk about it, and they really exaggerate what the scriptures say. <laughs> Yeah. Um, so I, I just I, I don't know what to say about that to be honest um, yeah. yeah, I do believe it's possible and I do believe possession is possible the details yeah. I don't know so I've okay. seen it uh, well I, I don't envy you on that that's scary um, yeah it is uh, I Coming from a, from a place where I've experienced being attacked from demons, um, like on a nightly basis, um, stopped for years because I, I was finally delivered by Jesus Christ. Um, it's terrifying and you don't want to sleep. You do whatever you can to stay up. And then there's certain amount of uh, there's a certain time period where it's the strongest. It's around three in the morning. And it has to do with Christ's death. Um, mm -hmm. Inverted. So it gives okay. them more power. 
but that's mine. Um, that's what I went through. And then finally, when I was delivered, I haven't had any problems since. And once I call on Jesus' name, because I, he, he had me witness their terror when he came or his angels came. You know, I didn't see anything. I didn't hear anything from his side. But I heard the evil side screaming away from whatever was coming to get to, to save me. You know? Sure. And that testimony will stay with me forever. Because every time I go to bed, I'm reminded, hey, you're being protected every single minute that you are asleep, that these demons are not coming in and, and trying to hurt you how they were before for so many years. Mm-hmm. And I've had so many deliveries before that and people try to help me. Nobody could. Nobody could. It was between me and God. Well, I'm sure that's a very, uh, oh, I forget the word right now, um, satisfying. Um, but that's not quite the word, but um, it's kind of along the lines I want. Comforting. 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 That's the word I'm looking for. <laughs> Thank you. Um, <laughs> that's very comforting. I... So I, I know there's some traditions about exercising or, you know, exorcisms. Um, <laughs> but when I look at the scriptures, it's nothing like what people do, or at least the, the ones that I've, you know, mainstream horror movies, not that I w- really watch them, but, you know, you see, you're, you're in well, society, that... you, you get a general idea, right? <laughs> or yeah, you're... It's, it's exaggerated yeah they, they well, exaggerate all stuff but it's terrifying as it is i don't i don't see the need why they want to exaggerate it I don't, you know maybe, just to maybe make them look more important I guess. Well, well actually what it is is that it makes it, what it is is that it makes your fear of the demons more powerful and it gives them more power it's one the, uh, the reason those gives, movies gives are them made more power. Is to open port the reason those movies are made is to open portals I've yeah. been telling people that for years. Nobody believes me. Well, it's to open portals. It's to open portals into your mind to leave you open to the to leave you open and susceptible to the adversary. That's why those movies are made. The, uh, those horror movies, those exorcism movies. In general, I agree because um, most people who watch it are vegging and just completely accepting what's. Yeah, if it, 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 the only the, the, if you're going to watch one of those movies, don't do it when you're tired yeah you need to i mean any movie to be honest you shouldn't just sit yeah. there and veg and accept it you should be critically thinking about what's being presented you yes. know any movie period yeah, yeah. Gotta... um that's the only way i watch movies and my husband does the exact opposite oh well <laughs> like, poor guy I, poor guy like, him what's <laughs> going on in the movie as it's playing it's like, come on, babe, just watch it for five seconds and pay attention. I have well, to take the if movie. You're, if you're using movies for background noise, then oof. Uh, yeah, there's better things. But a lot of people go in a hypnotic state when they're watching, and then then they're more willing to accept what's being taught. And that's yeah, well, the, not a good thing. The, 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 yeah, of course, with me, I never go into a hypnotic state when I'm watching a movie because I'm always looking at what they did and how they're because i i've done filmmaking before so it's like okay so now what they're doing here is they're setting this up and they're doing <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. the same thing it destroys the movie my husband's like can we just watch it <laughs> You're like, yeah. like well, didn't she notice that in that scene she had that up and now it's down they didn't continue the scene and he's like what the hell are you uh, talking about <laughs> my, my my wife sometimes when we're watching i'll i'll bring out what I think is going, what I see going on. It's just like, be quiet, Stephen. So <laughs> I just go record them. In fact, there's the link. I, I know Ben has seen some and Erica has said some and you've got both of said I've done a, I mean, I'm bragging a little bit, but I have I think I've done a good job. You guys, you guys have to be the judges, not me. But anyways. Yeah. Um, you did. Uh, yeah, I, 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 I appreciate, I appreciate your commentary. Uh, mine tends to be more along the lines. Uh, my mine tends to be a little more technical, a little less spiritual. Well, that's when what I, you were I go doing into... in your thing. That's yeah. what, probably yeah. a little more what you're interested on in that, that area, right? <laughs> yeah. 
my my commentaries tend to be a little more technical. So <laughs> well, if you get me on computers, I'll I'll do technical all day. I'm a software <laughs> yeah. engineer, but uh, that, but, that, uh, but, but I can still but I can still go through and I can still show you how they're and I can still show you the symbolic narrative and practically everything, even practically any film I watch, but it's still sure, sure. Um I, I need to do more. It's just it's a matter of time. But, yeah. <laughs> but back to my original thought, because uh, I actually didn't get to finish. Um, oh, sorry. No, that's fine. It was a natural <laughs> flow. No, no worries. Um, <laughs> but in Hebrew, the part that's translated as don't uh, take the Lord's name in vain is don't carry the Lord's name in vain. Ooh. Now, what I find interesting... Um, the New Testament, I'm pretty sure, and the Book of Mormon both say that if you take upon me my name and then you, you know, reject me, it would be better that you have never known me. And what is taking upon? That's caring. That's caring his name. You're, yeah, you're yeah. muted. I didn't hear you, Matt. Oh no, I'm I was talking to Ben. He has oh. to plug in his phone and he wants me to take over his chair. I'm oh. fine where I am and I'm listening. Okay. Well here, I'll just pause for a minute. So I honestly do believe because of the Hebrew behind that commandment is uh about thou shalt not caring and taking upon is caring. And so that's why I believe it's related, at least partly, to that. Mm. Um, taking the Lord's name upon you um, in vain. Meaning, yeah. you claim to be a follower of Yeshua, and you're really not. And or, and or um, you started to be, and then you rejected them afterwards. um that I, that actually I, makes a lot of sense yeah um well it comes it, it it that comes back to the whole idea of being not being double-minded mm -hmm. uh james talks about um that one. makes sense i hadn't tied that to that commandment but with this thought that would make sense it would be that um but anyways it just learning some of the Hebrew um, definitions behind these words uh, that I got from Dennis Prager and how that commandment is actually literally carry the Lord's name in vain is what yeah. kind of uh, helped me. And I, I've I like a lot a, of what Dennis Prager has to say. Yeah, so do I. Um, I have some of his commentaries. Um, at three of them, well, and then I have his Ten Commandments. Well, actually, I have his uh, Passover one I haven't listened to yet, so I guess I have a few more than just a couple. Uh, yeah, he's I have a, to do them all, but he's, um, a, he's a good he's a good Jewish boy. Yeah, yeah, I, I I like a lot what he brings out, but I mean, obviously, I don't agree with him completely. But um, he's put effort into his mm -hmm. his research and thoughts, um, yeah. like diligent effort even if i don't agree with them um and like the way that he explains he, the, at least he comes by them honestly yes i i do think he's honest and i think he is sincere and, and actually really trying i don't always agree with him like um i don't completely agree with his interpretation of that commandment but yeah. it was because of him i came to this because i'm bringing right. out what it was actually in hebrew and I'm just connecting it to the New Testament and the Book of Mormon, which he doesn't believe in. So uh, yeah. I have a little, I have a little more than he does that I'm trying to add to what I've gotten from him. So yeah, um, that's actually, that's actually really, that's really a good insight um, because it makes a lot of the, um, it makes a lot of the statements regarding prayer it makes make much more sense. <laughs> Many yeah. of the people, uh, many from many of the apostles, uh, from Alma, uh, makes a lot of those makes 
it ties them back into Torah. It ties all that back into Torah. So, um, and along with that, this here I'll, I'll feel like this. So I'm still working on that post. <laughs> uh, this is like the bottom part of it. Um, but anyways, um, but uh, where to start? Oh, okay. Well, anyways, here you want to okay uh, kind of read through this, and then maybe I'll stop you and do commentary. Okay, and it shall come to pass that whosoever doeth this, that's A A A B, shall be found at the right hand of God. And that's the commandments. I I, I mean, I I think it's pretty obvious yeah. from the context, but maybe I need to add. Right. A I think you it, may but... need to. You may need to. You may. It, there are people who will who will willingly overlook the fact that this <laughs> is actually a reference to the commandments. Uh yeah, I I can I it's just uh anyways. I, yeah, I put a lot of effort into it so far as it is. But, yeah, I no, I'm I, I'm not yeah, I'm not criticizing that. I'm just telling but, you know that there are people who will oh, willingly. Oh yeah, oh yeah, um, I know. <laughs> or he shall know the name character by which he is called. Yeah, or look at that. Name. Yeah, I mean, yes, it is authority, but it's also character, and right. But I can prove that. Let's go look at the um, dictionary. Yeah, you told and, me that. You told me I was going to like this, and I think you're right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so the letters of character, that's not that one, right? I mean, that'd be no. a stretch if I was trying to use that one. Yeah. <laughs> Reputation. Character. Reputation, character, that which is commonly said of a person has a good name, a bad name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh. yeah. Right, right there. And I don't remember the other one. Let's see. Assume character of another. Yeah. So that uh four and nine go with that. Yeah. And so that, yeah, you got a double witness within your dictionary definition. Yeah. I, I mean, I'm 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 not putting the full because I, I mean this is getting long already, so I'm just putting it and then go look at the link <laughs> yeah <laughs> I, I, I gotta do somewhat of a balance <laughs> yeah you Not can't, do it. You can't do it all well here you can't do it all for him no uh, i could but I, I, no, I don't think that's what i don't think that's what you're called to do no anyways i i i gave them a reference if they want to click on it yeah the name character by which he is called designated okay now let's go look at that one Okay. I'm I'm not making this stuff up. Well, that's designated is always the way that I looked at that anyway. Oh, okay. I hadn't. I was thinking like voice, but I think most people had. I think I, I think a lot of people in the Doctrine of Christ group think about think about it that way but i i've always thought of it as because you know yeah yeah to, to when, we, to when we receive a calling it's a designation it's a designation to an office right or, or um what you're now going to do as in yeah. which kingdom because your kingdom was going to determine what you're going to do right right Maybe. You could even kind of put uh, um, kingdom into the office to some degree, maybe, but I, I think yeah. more duty or, or even maybe employment. Yeah, I but, mean, I, you know, I think that's just consequence of consequence of the fact that my dad was always in high positions in the church and knew what a who knew what a calling was. Um, sure. Yeah, yeah, that could be. And that's um, why maybe that's why I've always thought of the calling as the designation. Sure, sure. I I don't think common English today would consider it that way, but um, uh, maybe I'm my wrong. dad my dad was also an English major too. Ah, so well that helped not you only, a lot. So he knew not only current common definitions, he also knew old definitions. Wow. And he was a he was a wordsmith who made us learn our words. I didn't have that. 
<laughs> I think most people didn't. But no, most people did not. Um, At least he was a wordsmith when he wasn't angry. When he was angry, <laughs> it got it got very bad. Uh, okay, so he, he used some uh, vulgar words. <laughs> yeah, he taught us. He taught us some words that are. He, ta he taught us some bad words that are not in common usage. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> um, uh, I'd probably most people you know, do that. One wants to say, man, that nobody knows. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Anyways. <laughs> okay. Back uh, to this. He was a, he was a very he was a very colorful man, but he he actually had a lot of things, or a lot of um, at things. least belief I would say that's good anyway so I think you're right here for he shall be called designated by the name character of Christ the anointed one yeah okay so designated right hand that's your designation right and look it goes with uh the a oh you know what I need oh yes the, that. The, it comes Okay, yes, yes. Um, because that goes with these just I just kind of split into two, but anyways, right? Right hand a god is a designation, right? Mm -hmm. and right, it's done by whether if you have the character or not of the anointed one, which is the Messiah. But I chose mm -hmm. the anointed one in this case because he's anointed with the Holy Spirit, which is Torah, which defines the character. Mm -hmm. Um, but anyways. Yeah. And, okay. So, and now uh, it shall come to pass that whosoever shall not take upon him the name, character of Christ, the anointed one, must be called or designated by some other name or character. <clears throat> Therefore he findeth himself on the left hand of God, another designation. Uh, Elohim. And I would that you should remember also that this is the name or character. Well, you know, maybe. Just to uh, make it a little more clear, right? Yeah. Okay, sorry. Okay, so, uh, and I would that you should remember also that this is the name or character that I said that I should give unto you that should never be blotted out, erased, or forgotten. Okay, Except so let's just pause for a minute. So that's yeah. a build, A, B, C. That's uh, where it's building upon each other. Right. And then let's do the next A, B, C, because it's just the same thing again. Except it be through transgression. Therefore, take heed that you do not transgress, that the name, character, be not blotted out, erased, forgotten of your hearts. Yeah, so it's ones those they're in, and they're in juxtaposition to one another. Yeah, uh, but then let's go find out how we get things removed. <laughs> yep, my people are destroyed for lack of knowledge because thou hast rejected knowledge. I will also reject thee, you, and thou shalt be no priest to me, seeing thou hast forgotten the law. Forgotten the law. Uh, I'm going to say that again. Forgotten the law of thy God. <laughs> I will also forget thy children or followers. Yeah. The, rep, the three time repetition was for the benefit of the recording. And therefore, he that will harden his heart, the same receiveth the lesser portion of the word. And he that will, uh, that will not harden his heart, to him is given the greater portion of the word until it is given unto him to know the mysteries of God, Elohim, until he know them in full. And they that will harden their hearts to them is given the lesser portion of the word until they know nothing concerning his mysteries. And then they are taken captive by the devil and led by his will down to destruction. Now, this is what is meant by the chains of hell. So I, I regret to say that I can see this happening among friends of mine. Yeah. Um. But anyways, <laughs> also family members, I yeah. see it happening time with family members. Like for example, yeah. uh, my father used to be very knowledgeable with the scriptures, 
he stopped reading them every day and now you ask him a question he can't answer it which before i'd be like wait dad you taught me this yeah and he'd be like oh, i did i was like yeah don't you remember so it's com it's a complete blank in his mind now well I, I society is discouraging such things and so people are uh, people are best. people are taking the um people are taking the easy road out yeah and a lot of people that think that they're doing it they're proof texting in new age occult into satanism into the scriptures which is sad but yeah so well, um, anything that, anything that you any meaning that you input on the scriptures that is that does not tie back to the law is probably not correct right and so here let's actually here let's go back to the dictionary blotted let's go see what blotted means just so people know i'm not like making this stuff up yep um me and my silly dictionary they're gonna burn your dictionary steven uh that's gonna be hard because this one's on the no they're just gonna, they're just gonna crash it on the internet <laughs> actually that's this site was crashed for a while sadly yeah <laughs> I, i'm glad they brought it back up because there's other change oh, spotted erased yeah erased which is forgot yep um which completely goes with those other passages that we just read mm -hmm. so it's teaching the exact same thing using oops i think I using the name that. using the name character um but what is character is what you do and it's whether if you followed the law or not yeah, and character so, is and character is your behaviors right character behavior and what is mm -hmm. the spirit is behavior and mm -hmm. so i'm connecting it to this and then on top of that um the last one talks about it written on your heart. And what are we supposed right. to write on the heart? Oh, it's Torah is what we're supposed to write upon the heart. Yeah, well, and the way that you do that is by bringing it into your heart. Yeah. Doing it. Doing it. Reading it and doing it. Because if you just know it and you don't do it, it it's, that's You're not talking about yourself. that's not ta talking about some mystical new law that's going to be written on your heart by the hand of some spiritual being yeah no um because yahweh is not yahweh has mentioned. a physical body right now yeah, yeah. um Sorry, i had this girl, so so just cut off attention right now i had this girl i'm friends with her on facebook she was trying to teach me these new uh, teachings that she got from Heavenly Father. Um, one of them had to do with masturbation. She uh, had an for it and saying that it's created and went into source and, and using the words, you know, that we know from New Age. Source, creation, energy, but that energy, if you put it in your heart while you're doing the act, that it goes to healing somebody. What? And I'm in my yes, and my brain is going, wait a minute. My spirit goes, hold up, wait a minute. <laughs> Let's go back. You can't build a house and take out the 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 main frame oh. and then <laughs> oh it doesn't matter anymore. Now it's we can masturbate all we want. When I told you down there, it wasn't okay to masturbate, but you're telling me as we ascend, that's how God created Earth. What the freak are you saying lady yeah that's so crazy. basically so basically is she saying that we live on a giant fuck pod exactly mm. well aphrodite <laughs> right that's you know what aphrodite uh ridiculous. it comes in yeah. it comes from a big wad of sperm right yeah, yeah. Not, not wrong. yeah. yeah. you know what's at the the top of the veil in the salt lake temple <laughs> Oh my goodness! It's it's, it's Aphrodite. Here, I'll show you a picture. Yeah, that's that's show awesome. It, that's awesome. It's not it. there by accident. It's there on. No, no, no. It's all interwoven as Satan's. Uh, 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 it's his oh, religion. The, the the mystery religion is all tied into the reproductive act. Oh yeah, yeah. I, I mean that's why going after other gods is uh, very connected to adultery. And yeah. Sex. 
That's because yep. that's a big part of it. Yeah. Um, uh, thank you guys for bringing this up. I was thinking about this all week. Just like, what the heck? What's well, been a few weeks, but just talking to my husband about it, I was like, what do you mean? That doesn't make a lick of sense. Not in the spiritual sense, the scriptural, nothing. And you're getting this. Uh, uh, that's Aphrodite. Yeah. And oh here, my. God. See, there's the the shell, and then yeah. there's the two angels, that's and then the there's the little thing. Um, yeah. It's the Starbucks monster. Uh, yep. I have some. Uh, here, 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 I have of Aphrodite. Oh um, yeah, it all go back. Wrong, yeah, the, yeah, so the, See, so the, the shell, I, yeah, and there's the two angels. I mean, here it's got three, but it's 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 the same thing, right? And then they've got their claws for the reeves, so uh -huh. it's a little different, but it's basically the same, yeah, right. If everything was exactly the same, people uh, it would be harder, to it hide. would be too easy to it would be too easy to figure out what they were doing, yeah, but it's there on purpose because that's what they did there. Um, but anyways, in fact, uh, on top of that, guess what? Um, they have Saturn stones. Yep. That's yep. bad. That's how Brigham Young wanted it originally, but yep. because of technical skill, they went and did th just the circles, but, um, they're still called Saturn stones. Do I have a picture? Uh, I think this one has one. Uh, yeah, those, are, those ones aren't. Not, a, to, well, not to mention. A, yeah. Sorry, not guys. There's a religion. Yeah. Sorry. That they dress up in white and they go to these so called temples. The women dress up, the men dress up, and it, it kind of looks like the temple clothes. And they perform certain acts for the person, like they'll receive a, a being, a spiritual being, and tell them, hey, you need to do this and that in another voice, which is demonic. Yeah. And it's called the white tablecloth uh, of spiritualism. Well, so. And, um, it's amazing how they. And you know what? In, in Brazil, they know this and they say, oh, your religion is so much like mine. Yeah. Spiritually. So, th there's so hidden Hugh Nibley, you know, a lot of people think he was so great, yeah. <laughs> I don't. So um he's an apologist. Anyways, some people said that they he woke up. Then why didn't he arise? And then why did he keep justifying reasons to justify things if he actually woke up? Anyways, but uh, Hugh Nibley, in his research, shows that everything that they're doing in the temple is found in Mystery Babylon throughout the world. And so here's a quote of mine. Yes, yes, I know we can find ceremonies like those in LDS temples being done historically around the world. But that doesn't mean they are from God. Mystery Babylon has spread around the world. <laughs> the ceremonies being performed in LDS Brighamite temples are of the occult which is Mystery Babylon, and not of God. Uh, we can see how the works of darkness spread all over. Mm -hmm. And then, yeah, a Helaman, and it came to pass that the same being who led on the people who came from the tower into this land, who spread the works of darkness and abominations over all the face of the land. So, who Nibley is bragging about, he can find these ceremonies about all the face of the land until he dragged the people down to the entire destruction and everlasting hell if you ask me well you you see all these symbols of these religions all over of the secret religion all over the land and every culture that practices them has been has come to destruction yeah yeah so um i'll show you how you know what they worship there it is, right there. Yeah. Uh, so, I'll just say it, so you guys don't have to. <laughs> the LDS Church, Brighamite Church Office Building, Cobb, is the largest phallic dick I'm aware of. 
with complete with rounded top and two balls right there for all to see. That's who they worship. Say, yep, I'm immature. I'm laughing. <laughs> it's 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 funny and it's sad and disgusting and all gross. at the same time. Yeah, yes. exactly. Exactly. I mean, I've been up that shaft. I've been up there. I've been on uh, at least this side. I think I can't. I think I've been on both sides. But anyways, I, I grew up in Salt Lake, so. Um, I I I've I've been up there. No, uh, I haven't been to the very top because I don't think they let the general public go there. But they let no, the they don't let the general public go to, public the, go to the very level. top. And you can go, you can go, you can get pretty high up. Yeah, you can go to up to this level where they have these two um, uh, observatories. Observatories. That's the word I'm looking for. Yeah. Um, but yeah, that's what they. And look, the temple's part of it, but this is really worse. No. Anyway. Yeah. As um, you'll notice that you'll notice that the church office building is actually taller than the temple. Uh-huh. Because it's more important. Um oh, we have a new Kesley. <sighs> Kelsey. Hello. Kesley. We're we're recording, Hi. just so you know. Okay. Um. So here, or maybe I'll pause for a little bit. Okay. So going off of what you just said, um, in Torah, there is a prophecy of that Abraham's daughter. The oh no, Delilah. I, I hope I'm remembering that correctly. Is that uh, is that Abraham. Abraham's or Jacob's stuff? Oh no, Jacob's. Yeah, Jacob's. Sorry. Dinah. 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 Um, Dinah. Um, but anyways, she goes off and marries a Gentile, right? Right. Well, the first she gets first raped. He, she gets raped by a Gentile, and then uh, he that depends on the translation. Actually, that's that, true. That's, that's, true. that's somewhat debatable. I could see it either way, to be honest, okay. though. Um, even looking at what what I'm bringing out here, I could see it either way, because um, yeah. there's aspects of 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 complacency, complacency and forcedness into it. So I I'm not a hundred percent sure even with with the prophecy. Yeah, the, the, yeah, yeah, errors in translation and yeah. whatnot. Yeah, so I I could go either way, but um, she went off and and married a gentile, just yeah. Like, uh, the seven, seven week, seventy week prophecy. After the seventy weeks, uh, which was fulfilled three and a half years after Yeshua's uh, death and resurrection, it went to the Gentiles, mm -hmm. and with her brothers, because Jacob did nothing ah. about it. Because in fact, the fact that Jacob did nothing about it. And it was the brothers makes me think that it wasn't rape because if it was, yeah, right, Jacob would have done something. Jacob would have done something. I That's think she true. was kind of and going Jacob, around and, and went a little too far, and he knew that. But the yeah. brothers, they're worried about more of perception than actual truth. And right. Jacob was true. It's just why Jacob gets really mad at them for doing what they do. You, exactly. Yeah, because it was uncalled for. Um, but anyways, but what they did, they went and had the whole city um, get circumcised, just like the Judaizers do with the Gentiles. They have, they're going off saying, no, you need to be yep, circumcised. And mm -hmm. if you believe the Doctrine and Covenants and the Book of Mormon and even the New Testament, but it's a little bit i know people argue over it in the new testament but uh with the dnc and the book of mormon it makes it clear that was done away with yeah circumcision was done away yeah um it was that a lot of the blood right a lot of the blood rights were done away yeah so on on the prophecy though <laughs> sorry go ahead i, I don't know who was talking it's me, Erica. Sorry. Why did they keep them? The blood rights, like even in the hospitals now, it's normal to have 
your baby circumcised like seven days or eight days after. Why does anybody do things contrary to the scriptures? Because well, uh, all traditions. Okay. I and and um and part of it is people don't know any better, and doctors get more money when it happens. Yeah, yeah. it's it's all about uh, hospitals are money making machines. Uh, and initially, I forget the year. Um, they didn't do that in the United States. It was when either a doctor or psychologist or something thought had the idea if if they did that, uh, the kids would stop masturbating. But that didn't happen. <laughs> they, they did it, so it doesn't no, solve the problem. No um, now, here's a theory that I have of why it was done away because. Uh, because there's two things I know that are done away with at the death of Yeshua. Law of Moses, okay, which is the day of performance and ordinances, and circumcision. Circumcision. So, um, the Midianites did not have this. And we can uh, see that in Torah, um, that when Moses was supposed to circumcise one of his sons, his wife called him a bloody husband because they weren't doing it. And so it was just the bloodline of Abraham that was doing it. And Abraham gave him to his wife and having a concubine. And I, this is according to me. It's because he did that. Because it's only mentioned later after that it's not mentioned before that i think it relates this is according to me this is my theory trying to figure things out this is i think i can glean it from scriptures but i am still going a little beyond if that makes sense i'm trying to put the pieces together because the midianites were following yahweh and they didn't do that yes you're right Abraham. <laughs> They actually had their own. In, they actually had their own independent priesthood line. Right, they did, and the DNC states that, which I'm grateful that you showed me that, Ben, because that's actually helped me kind of put some of these pieces together. Yeah, um, the Midianites had their own independent priesthood line, and they weren't doing that, and that's why Moses's wife called him a bloody husband. I mean, it was a requirement of Yahweh, but. It was because of the line that he was on, Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, which they, two of those guys, not three, two, had a problem with it, that. Yeah, there is absolutely no evidence that Isaac ever entered into polygamy. No, there's none. And DNC 132 has tons of problems. That's a whole other discussion. But um, anyways... So what you so you're thinking that circumcision was kind of like the symbol of blood guilt for polygamy? To simplify, uh, simplify where you're at. Yeah, I think it's a curse for what Abraham did. He was forgiven, and, and that it was because and you're forgiven it was doesn't mean up, curse and, and therefore swallowed up in the atonement of Christ. Yeah, and. Um, they weren't Gentiles. I, I mean, they weren't of the line of Abraham. Um, because here, here's these Judaizers who are trying to tell the Gentiles they need to be circumcised. And Paul's like, no, they don't. Um, right. Um, right. That, but that actually puts that into an, that actually puts that into an interesting light. That, that actually, that's actually understandable from the. So it is conceivable and those in the book of mormon they were the line of abraham so they still had to do it until they got the resurrection sure. which is why it comes up in uh moroni 8 because they went some of them went back to it right um mm -hmm. and the right. dnc states um it shouldn't be done anymore right as long as it's right. the same with uh moroni 8 anyways hmm that's my that's an interesting theory. Yeah, I mean that's a that's a that's actually as that's actually as valid an explanation as I've heard. 
Uh, well, thank you, because uh, there's a lot of interesting theories out there. <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not, I'm not saying that. I mean, I, I'm gonna, I'm gonna investigate it. I'm gonna look at it. Sure, sure. Definitely, I, you, definitely it's definitely worth looking at. On initial looking, it, there's some possibility to it. Um, but yeah, and it also would explain, and it also would explain why after the resurrection of Christ, you still have Paul referring to both Abraham and Jacob as towering pillars of faith, and that in spite of what they did, it seems. Oh, cases. right. Well, um, Paul was quite a, a towering after he, he repented. Um, yeah. And so can we. The, the thing that holds us back is repentance. In fact, the reason why David was after the heart of Yahweh is simply because he repented. Not because he was perfect, but because he repented. And, and in, I mean, and in terms of his, in terms of his repentance, even his repentance wasn't a hundred percent perfect because there were things that he didn't, full, that he never fully repented of. Right. He, never, he didn't, he didn't divorce. He never gave up his wife. He never gave up his wife that he gained by murder. Correct. Um, and I, in fact, it, it never said he ever divorced any of them. It did say he didn't go into any of them except for one anymore. Right. Right. Um, like we talked about last time. <laughs> Anyways, but he went to the wrong one, but that's a whole nother subject. Um, uh, but that's my current theory of what's going on with that. But this is me. I yeah. Guess. So yeah, it's, it's, it's based it, off the of scriptures. It, take it to, uh, yeah. Take it with take a grain it, of salt. And take it and take it with a grain of salt. Take it to the oh. scriptures. See how it. Uh, see how it fits. Because uh, the Midians weren't of the line of Abraham, mm -hmm. which you helped me learn, Ben. Which kind of helped me put the pieces together. But anyways, so um, back on the other thing we were talking about the the temple. So here's an interesting thing. So in Torah, it talks about how you should not uh, a man should not dress up like a woman, right? Yeah. Okay, so there's the obvious interpretation of that. Like men shouldn't go wear up dressed as women. Drag queens are cool. Drag queens are cool. Drag queens are cool. Yeah. We drag queen story time isn't what's supposed to happen all over uh, the all Well, not too much because I don't want Facebook or YouTube to censor this. But, anyways. Oh, I'm sorry. No, that's fine. <laughs> we'll play, I don't have to take something out. Um, but here's another thing that I find interesting related. To the temple anciently because a lot of these commandments in tor are basically summarized as don't be like the pagans right yes a lot of places yes. the pagans had these plays in their as their ceremonies to worship god and in those plays men dressed up as women and that tradition even went through to at least Shakespeare, because men were still dressing up as women during these plays. Not because women couldn't act. It was because it was the tra pagan tradition that they're basing things off of. Mm -hmm. And so I believe that that commandment, not a man dressing up like a woman, is also teaching against these plays that are in these temples, including the LDS Brighamite temple. Because I don't think that outside of these ceremonial plays that they did to worship their gods, they went around dressing up like men. It was just during those plays. And dressing that's what... Like women, Sorry, mm -hmm. go ahead, Matt. Dressing up like women, you mean? Yeah, the men, a men dressing like... up like women. Yeah. That's is what I believe it's actually really going towards. Yeah. That's Did you guys know that um, in, I don't know if it's Japanese or Chinese theater, I think it's Japanese theater, only men could um, be part of it. They wouldn't have women. So they would have the men dressed up as women, just like that. Yeah, yeah I And that. it was men. Women could not be part of it. It's still to this day. Oh, I didn't know they were still doing that. Uh, I knew it. Yeah, and it's a, it's a, it's a classic part of Kabuki theater. Yeah, uh, Kabuki theater. Yeah, yeah. 
so they're still doing it in some cultures and it, it from well, the, my understanding all that, you have to go all you have to do is go down you know all you have to do is go down broadway you'll find some play with some man with some man dressing up as a woman sure 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 um so I do think it has the other aspect to it that's the obvious, but I think at its core, it's going against these the pagan play, tradition. the pagan tradition of plays to worship mm -hmm. their gods, which is what's happening in the Brighamite temple, mm -hmm. because Yahweh's temple didn't have a play; it had ordinances. Yeah, of sacrificing animals yeah so show me show me the act and show me the actual ordinance that's ever performed in a temple well it's outside of the washing outside of the wash outside beyond washing and anointing well i i used to think you could justify the brighamite washing anointing um with torah i don't believe so anymore yeah, I don't. I don't think so either. I'm just saying, but it. But it does. Uh, but from the point of view of being, um, from the point of view of satisfying the definition of an ordinance period, uh, just generally speaking, it, I, I I understand how people would take. I, I'm not that talking about it. being a, like God's ordinance or an authorized ordinance. I'm talking about just general religious. Oh yeah, yeah. I I understand how put people. Get it from there. But I I did it one time, <laughs> so yeah. I, I uh, well, I, I, uh, and like I said, I'm not saying it's legitimate. I'm just saying that out. I'm just saying that generally speaking, from the outside looking in, if you were not a member of the church, if you saw that, you would say, okay, they're doing an ordinance. Well, I think if, generally speaking, the outside says they're just wrong. It, it'd be more the inside trying to justify it. <laughs> no, I'm I'm just saying. It's Visual. recognized visually. It's recognizable as an ordinance. Somebody lays uh, their sure, sure. head, sure. and okay. it's visually recognizable as an ordinance. Right. Um, I'm not speaking anything about its legitimacy. I'm okay. just talking about its visual recognizability. Sure. Um, uh, and so, outside of that, where in the where in the endowment ceremony is an ordinance actually performed? Well, it depends on what you define it as. Because uh, there's oaths taken, and you can consider that a, an ordinance. Um, so it, yeah. I think it somewhat depend, depends on the, the exact definition. Yeah, that's true. Um, but those oaths are patterned off of what um, the evil people did in the Book of Moses. Yeah. Right, uh, exactly. They're patterned off of they're patterned off of um, the oath of Cain. Uh, yeah, but the, the, I think in the Book of Moses it mentions it with somebody else, doesn't it? It wasn't it uh, one of his. Yeah, but it, uh, it, sons, but the, but the oath started with Cain. Oh, the yeah. oath started with Cain. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And then um, they went through his descendants. Right, right. Um, the one who got in real trouble for it was also the first noted instance of polygamy. Um, Tubal King? No. Yeah, no. no that, I'd have to go look. His, right. his father. Uh, right. uh, uh, we could go look. That's going to be the Book the of Lamech. Moses. Lamech. Lamech, yes. Lamech. Oh. Yeah, that sounds right. But anyways... Oh, that's bad enough for that. And yeah. So, interesting. Um, it, it's bad for him, but good for you. Come on, wake up. Sorry. <laughs> but wake up. There is Monster, no... You had something to say? Yeah. Unmuted. You have something oh, to add? I'm too lamic, that's all. Okay. Yeah, she was uh, she was putting it out there. Okay. Yeah. Oh, yeah. She was the little birdie that whispered in my ear. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Thanks was, for that. Is that a, a white bird or a black and white bird, Matt? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> well, you should test it to the scriptures and find out. 
<laughs> no, that's a, a no. She, what she said is absolutely correct. The yeah. name of the person is Lemay. Yeah. yeah. Anyways, yep. and these first and first, uh, you, the interesting thing is that these secret combinations of polygamy seem to go together. Uh, yes, because um, it, it seems to be a, a strong <laughs> desire um, for for men. Um, which I've well, it's because I, I think it, a lot of it has to do with the fact that the mystery religion it does operate primarily around the generative principle uh yeah that would be another part of it um so yeah um, um it's just trying to uh keep it uh just trying to so keep it I, i'm not gonna get graphic here but you go look at the typical virgin mary and the other part um there's a lot of similarities and i'll leave it at that um so it's 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 strong <laughs> yeah uh, when you anyways i'll just leave it at that i don't want to get into details but yeah we'll leave that we'll leave that to uh, leave that to lower to lower level energy <laughs> well well it's good to expose it i just don't want to get into details <laughs> yeah um especially but, not on the, especially not on the sabbath well you, you know here um let's see so i have a question actually sure talking about as i've been you know asking a lot of these questions about like the covenant curses so mm -hmm. it covenant seems like to me from what i've been looking at and reading like yes it was something that you know evil men did to enter into those covenants i think from my understanding it was they took it upon themselves to fulfill this curse um, whereas i feel like god actually does curse people who disobey him in those ways because they are left to be eaten by a wild beast and those kinds of things when they nice. leave god's command <laughs> Sure, sure. But when you look at history of what happens, and we'd have to go look at the actual wording, but I, I but in masonry, for sure, there's a history of although the oaths say you do it to yourself, the members did it for you if you didn't do it yourself first. And there's uh, multiple examples. I mean, they're controversial, right? But um, yeah, and it goes, I think it. Uh, if I remember correctly, Laman and Lemuel did something along those lines to, to Nephi, where they were going to yeah. throw him out. And so it's the wicked doing it to somebody. Um, yeah, the wicked are often used to punish the wicked. Right. And also, um, when you look at some of this history um, and, and these organizations, those are kind of teaching you what you should if you get high enough in, in the new organization, what you're going to be doing to other people. Mm -hmm. um, so I, yeah, I, I, I I'm, pr it's been a long time since I've gone to the Brighamite temple, but I think it says that you'll do it yourself, but so does the Masonic one, which is what it's patterned off of. In fact, um, I have quotes that Brigham Young met with Jesuits on the way to the West, and I believe uh, part of the temple ceremony became came from uh, the Jesuit order. I think there's other parts to it also. For example, the um, creation, which contradicts all creation histories, including the ones in the Restoration, uh, actually matches the one from the Cochranites, which is where Brigham Young got his uh, spiritual wifery, aka polygamy, from. Mm -hmm. um, so what is so, different about it? Uh, some of the days are wrong, um, and we we could the days, are, the days are straight off. Yeah, I if you want, we can go look at a unfinished post I have on it <laughs> because I get sidetracked. I was just curious. We don't have to go over it in detail. Yeah, I mean, some of the days are off. Um, and if I remember correctly, day four is off also, because day four is when Yeshua comes and performs the atonement 
and in mm-hmm. the Brighamite temple and the Conquerite ceremony, because I, I don't think they claimed the temple, but anyways, um, they I think they put day four as day three, which puts Yeshua in the wrong um, century because the creation history is prophecy also when you start looking into its details. Interesting. Yeah, I I, I have. I talk about one in one place I have. Um, I briefly mention it in the presentation that I did on the Lunar Sabbath. Yeah, so um, let's just get it up a little bit. Let's see. So here's one I have published which is actually from the one that's, oops, it would help if I could spell. Um, so, um, so those who don't know, uh, I'll just do a quick, I think most everybody here knows, I believe this, even if they don't know too many details, I believe in the lunar Sabbath, meaning the Sabbath is determined by the cycle of the moon. And that cycle changed around 700 BC. We don't know exactly. Um, most people put it, or historians put it around 702, 703, 704. Okay. Mm-hmm. And it's in the scriptures. So here's a couple places that talks about it. Here's, I know of four that talk about this event, but it was about 700 BC. And the lunar cycle changed from 30 days all the time. In fact, um, uh, Maybe I should add that to that page, but anyways, I got stuff scattered around. Um, Noah. So the history of Noah in Genesis 7 shows that the lunar cycle used to always be 30 days, okay, Mm -hmm. until after the flood, which also is another, is one thing, side subject, uh, contradicts the Book of Enoch, because Book of Enoch Sometimes they even say it's 28 days. Sometimes it says 29. Sometimes it's 30. And I think one time they mentioned even 31. I'm not 100% sure on that. But anyways, but <laughs> Enoch was before Noah, and it was always 30 days. Always. Yeah. And uh, yeah, the yeah the book of Enoch is full of problems. Yeah. And it contradicts the GST, and it contradicts the calendar. It, it has, like you said, it has tons of problems. But anyways, uh, Noah's voyage on the ark shows that... The lunar cycle was 30 days all the time. It was all that way with Moses, David, and up to 700 BC, okay? Um, which was with, okay, go up. I, oopsie. Um, all the way up to Isaiah and Hezekiah, okay? Hezekiah. Because uh, Hezekiah... Um, Isaiah comes to Hekaziah and says, uh, uh, the Lord wants to give you a sign. And Hekaziah is like, I, I'm not going to test the Lord. But, I mean, here's the Lord saying, do it. And anyways, the sundial, the shadow on the sundial went back 10 degrees. This also shows that uh, the hours of the day was tracked by sundials um, and, and not something else. But anyways, that's another side subject. It's just the calendar is a big deal for me as I wrote a program for it. <laughs> Anyways, um, but so at 700 BC is when it went from 30, always 30 to 29 and a half, give or take. It, it ranges, it actually ranges from 29.2 something to 29.8 something. Um, do I have it here? Oh, no, I'm not saying it right now. Anyways, that's just a side thing. That's not an important part. But when you go look in the creation history, that's in the fourth day, fourth century, which is when the sun and the moon is appointed to determine all appointed times, including the weekly Sabbath. Because um, mm-hmm. the weekly Sabbath is an appointed time. Yeah. Um, and so before that, you could just always count because it it just was 
clockwork, right? Now it's yeah. a little more, it's a lot more math. And so, Paul. And so from that point on, it now becomes, um, it, it, yeah, there's a lot. It, it, you can't just you have it to, now. You have, you to, have to observe. You have to observe or you know the complicated math. math. <laughs> yeah. Because it's, it's not simple. And most places, including other Luther Sabbatarian programs, they use the 29.5 average instead of the actual 29.2, give or take, and 29.8, give or take. E even sites that will charge you to know when these phases are, they're doing 29 and a half, which is a simple y, y equals mx plus b. It's a lot more complicated that to get it accurate. But um, that happened in the fourth day or fourth century because that's when the sun and the moon was appointed. The fourth millennium. Yeah, or, yeah, fourth millennium. Sorry, not the fourth hundred year. <laughs> it, would have, it would help if I used the right term, right? Yeah, fourth millennium. <laughs> um, sorry about that. But anyways, that's part of the creation prophecy. Um, so... Yes, yeah, so and Jesus and Jesus is in the fifth millennia. No, he's in the fourth. He's in the fourth. Yeah, oh yeah, the that's right. the tail end of the fourth. That's he's right. The he's the son of righteousness. That's right. And he has the twelve followers, which goes along with the twelve months. And yeah, that's on the true. Baptist is the moon, and he had thirty. Oh right, that, on the fifth day is the the fifth day is the creation of animals and such. Yeah. 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 Um, and and John the Baptist is the moon, which um says for yeshua's light which he states he does and he had 30 followers just like the 30 days of the moon yeah that well that would make sense because 700 bc is still in the same millennium yeah yeah it is just barely yeah um, <laughs> well I, I i don't get real involved with the year um controversy because like the Book of Mormon puts Yeshua born at, at zero, right? Because, but in, in the Gregorian calendar, it wasn't zero. And there's these big debates about it. But anyways, I I believe he died 30 AD. And I'll 30. just leave it at that. Yeah. Okay. Um, uh, probably a big proof for that is when was the temple destroyed as prophesied in Daniel 9? 70 AD. 70 AD, the 40 years after, which is part of... Oh, yeah, the, yeah, the Daniel 9 prophecy. Mm -hmm. Daniel 9. You see, the, yeah, this is... Yeah. I need to... So, find, I, 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 need I know to a lot of people go off these other really complicated stuff that's hard to follow, and they get different dates. And some of these are because they think that the continuous... that the calendar is a continuous seven-day cycle, which it's not. Mm -hmm. Um and so they get stuck on that argument um but anyways i because of the destruction of the temple that's pretty well established i believe 70 a.d because that's 40 years before that no that was that was vespasian um they came in and did that yeah As I mean, general we, general for i believe that at that time, it was Caligula still. But, might have been, might have been Nero. Nero, it was Nero. Yeah. Uh, I think it was Nero, but that's I. Yeah. I'm not 100 percent sure. I mean, we could go find out. Yeah, it's not important. And but the fact that uh, Daniel nine is fulfilled is important because yeah. the pinnacle portion of that prophecy is Yeshua's atonement when the daily sacrifices were done away with, as stated in the prophecy. And do you think, what about, what are your, and what are your thoughts on Daniel 12? Uh, I'd have to go look at it. But, uh, I, we go that's look a at separate, that? It's a separate prophecy. A lot of people say it's of the end times. Uh, um, and I think, I think it would be uh, I think it would be interesting to look at, but I don't know that it's. Uh, what uh, do you I'm guys? Do? Look what at do you guys want to do? What these guys want to do? I'm fine to look at it. I, that's not one I've studied in depth on, but I'm I'm happy to look at it. Yeah. I don't know anything about it. 
Now, the Daniel 12 prophecy is the one that everybody is the one that a lot of people talk about in relation to the second coming. It's got the Antichrist in it. It's got, or no, it's not the Antichrist, it's the little horn. Um, uh, well, yeah. I actually did read that chapter recently, but I don't know what it means. <laughs> Well, I, I do. I do tend to believe the little horn is the antichrist because the well, the antichrist actually the the, the antichrist is actually a non-scriptural thing designation. Well, right, right, right. So a second coming, to be honest. Yeah. Um, but people today, when we say it, we know what we're talking about. But I don't necessarily think it's one individual person like most people claim it is. I think it's an. Uh, I think it's the papacy system, but anyway. Mm -hmm. um, let's see. Let's see if there's a JST real quick on that chapter. Uh, no, no. Yeah, um, uh, technically it's chapter Daniel 11, uh, and Daniel 11 is related to it as well. Uh, sure. And uh, I mean, a lot of these visions from Daniel is highly correlated with uh, the book of Revelations, right? Right. Um, and it, a lot of it is about uh, the four slash five kingdoms of Satan. I'm more inclined to say five. There's controversy on that. Mm -hmm. um, but even if it's four, the fourth one merges into something else, which I think then makes it clear, count as a fifth. But anyways, right. um, in fact, that those who haven't seen it, I'm just going to plug it a little bit. Um, I talk about some of these issues in my the, uh, uh, commentary. Yeah, the whole, the whole, the whole vision, the whole visions of Daniel are surround are around it's really built around the one that's given earliest that with the tall statue with the four mixtures with the, with the four different uh, made of the four different substances a yeah, lot of it a lot of it built into that if you want a short commentary i did the the one i did on Lindsay sterling uh or her music video till Satan. Or oh, okay, that's what I'm renaming it. Sorry. Uh, till the light goes out uh, is talking about this. These five kingdoms also. Um, yeah. So, if, and that one's uh, just thirty minutes. Where the the Grinch one is. I mean, not the Grinch. The oh, I, I think I did the wrong one. It's the Charlie and Chocolate Factory. That yeah. I meant to do. Um. That one's about the five kingdoms in Babylon, which is what they're kind of basing things off of, right? Um, so, but we can go look at 12. It's just, I, oh, okay. All right. So where do you want to go? Well, let's, um, let's start in Daniel chapter 11. Okay. This, this, there are a lot of people, a, a lot of people who I've seen who actually kind of whose interpretations of uh, end time prophecy I find interesting because they actually they look at it a little differently in that they make it uh, Israel centric kind of thing. Uh, I, I can little, kind of I, see. Uh, well, it depends on how they make it that way, I guess. But yeah, um, I, 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 uh, I, the thing is, I see a double, I see a double fulfillment wherever I see that these, I see that these, I see that these prophecies apply wherever there is a Jerusalem, whether new. Yeah, yeah. Or so I, I think a lot of prophecy has multiple fulfillments, as yeah. the, the way I see it. A lot of these prophecies, some I know how and some I don't. Like I, I even just brought one out about the um, Jacob's daughter, right, and what happened with the church. Right. I, it's right there in Torah. So I do believe a lot of these prophecies, if we understood Torah more, they would be brought out from Torah. 
that well they would be they they would be clear to us whereas oftentimes now they are uh we see them dimly we right right yeah um and if, i think i said it wrong the, if we understood torah better and had the spirit of prophecy as i think it's second nephi 25 states that we would be able to understand these things more which mm -hmm. is given to us by after keeping torah um we would understand it more but uh i'm i'm still working at it but i do think because it works these things are based upon there's macro cycles and micro cycles that are happening of these same prophecies that are happening but yeah, yeah. but these prophets um brought it out in a way that it's applicable multiple times now and a lot of them but daniel 9 with the 70 weeks prophecy there's only yeah. one savior okay. right exactly that one's only one that daniel 9 daniel 9 i'm i'm pretty satisfied that uh i'm pretty satisfied that that was satisfied at the time of Jesus Christ. Yeah, and the 40 years after, right? Because of the destruction. Yeah, and, and, yeah, the time immediately before and after. Yeah, yeah. Um, I, I think even what the chiasm I did brought out um, brings that out even more, I think. Um, I just I, I just find that chiasms, putting the stanzas together gives more insights. Um, back. Uh, just to show Monica a little bit, because she was talking a little bit on just, just to sidetrack a little bit and then we can go back um, yep. um another time we can go over this um monica as you can see so this is the big part of daniel 9 with the 70 weeks and mm -hmm. um when you look at these I, I could send you a picture later if you want on messenger okay. Uh, I just couldn't earlier on the phone. I, anyways. Okay. Or, no, I think I did, but it's separated. I can send you one it's in, in one picture. Um, in fact, it, let me show you just what we're looking. Um, hey. There. Uh, there's the whole thing. But, um, See, there's a little summary at the beginning, and it talks about how mm -hmm. it's um, about working out sins. And so uh, right here, so this first A, it's Daniel's confessing his sin and the sins of his people. So uh -huh. Daniel's sin was reconciled. Israel's had consequences because they didn't repent. Daniel did. And you go to this other A. Um, it's interesting it, for thou art greatly beloved Daniel therefore understand the matter of this dream and what's the matter it was told us in the other um, A stanza uh, forgiveness of sins and consequences of sins just as mm -hmm. this A and this A mm -hmm. and consider the vision the 70 weeks, or it's 490 years, right? Uh, 70 weeks uh, okay, so. are determined upon Daniel's people, the Israelites, and upon the holy city, Jerusalem, because the temple is destroyed, and that's the center part of the city. And then down at the bottom, it shows the destruction of the temple, which goes along with the sign of Jonah. And mm -hmm. one thing about Jonah, most people don't know, Jonah went around prophesying for three days, just like Yeshua went around the people oh. as a minister for three yeah. and a half years. So uh, they're very tied. Yeah. No, oh, yeah. It, it's just really funny because um, of all the yeah. prophets that we have in the old in the Old Testament, Jonah is quite possibly the most human of them. Oh yeah, and in fact. He went into the belly of the well, <laughs> which is the sea beast, and then repented and then came out. 
Interesting. Just like how we're supposed to do. When we repent, we leave the sea beast. And we turn to Torah. We turn yeah. to the law. We turn to the law of the Lamb. Uh, uh, another interesting little tidbit. Um, even today, there are instances on record of men being swallowed by fish. Even today. There are some pretty darn big fish. Yeah. And then on top of that, I just need you to brush probably you. one of the things that help Nineveh to repent is their false god was a fish god. And here's this human that survived from being swallowed from a fish. And um, another interesting tidbit, the Catholic Pope's hats look like a fish head. <laughs> Going back yes. to the media. But anyway. Yes. <laughs> uh, so, Mystery Babylon's been around for a long time. But anyways, so, <laughs> unless you want to go into more details, maybe we can go back to, to Ben's thing. Yeah. Um, what do you guys want to do? Oh, one thing I just want to say. Here, right here. It, in the midst, the middle of the last week, he caused the sacrifice and obligations. When you go look at the the Hebrew word behind that, it's offerings, which is the daily performance and ordinances, which is interesting. The same word is used in Exodus 29, which has to do with the daily performances and ordinances. He causes them to cease. Yeah, he causes them to cease. And that's what you have to do. Just, just as it talks about in the Book of Mormon, yeah. that they did walk, they did no more walk after the law of Moses, but they did continue to walk after the commandments, commandments which is the Ten Commandments and everything that goes along with that. Because if you're really mm -hmm. keeping the Ten Commandments, you're going to keep all the expounding upon the Ten that Yeshua gave, um, yeah. because Yeshua is helping them understand how to keep the Ten. Mm -hmm. But anyways, um, so it's right here. In, in the Old Testament, it's just uh, most prophecy buffs claim this is a future one because they claim 69 weeks and then a pause of 2,000 years and then the last week. And that's just not the case. Even many in the Restoration believe that, which is sad. Well, I mean, that, that, that's like saying that God doesn't know how to count. Uh, yeah, but they need it to get their false interpretations to work so um i'm just gonna say it again that's like saying that god doesn't know how to count uh i agree with you and I, i'm just i mean i'll just scan here look at all these verses in the book of mormon that i have that shows law of moses is a daily performance and ordinances and that it's done at yeshua's death I mean, I have an, there's an example in 35. And then there, there, and he has a similar number of examples of Torah being kept after Christ. Uh, yeah. So just, I mean, I have already have a recording on it, but you can just see. I have a few. And after the resurrection. It grows as I put time into it because I actually added this one a couple of days ago. Yeah. <laughs> um, it's just, it takes effort to think about this stuff um, and try to put it all together. But, anyways. Um, okay. So, do you guys want to continue along that line or do you want to go into uh, Daniel 11? Uh, Daniel 11. Yeah, that's fine. So okay. This is somewhat speculative, right? <laughs> but nothing. It, I'm going to state here that the only thing that is scripture is what is actually in the scripture. Yeah. Any conjectures that we make off of this is not necessarily scripture and should yeah. not be taken as such. Yeah. I, I. So I think some points are probably more obvious than others. But um, this Daniel 11, Daniel 12 is not something I put a lot of effort into trying to figure out. Okay. I've been more focused on other things. Um, so. Okay. So, all righty. So I'll start in verse one. Also, I, in the first year of Darius the Mede, even I stood to confirm and to strengthen him. And now will I show thee, and now will I show thee the truth. 
Behold, there will stand up yet three kings in Persia, and the fourth which shall be far richer than they all, and by his strength through his riches he shall stir up at all against the realm of Grecia. And a mighty king shall stand up that shall rule with great dominion and do according to his will. And when he shall stand up, his kingdom shall be broken, shall be divided towards the four winds of heaven and not to his posterity, nor according to his dominion, which he ruled. For his so, kingdom um, just to this is talking a bit. about Alexander. This is talking about the Persians and Alexander. Yeah, yeah. So th this, I, I think some of this right here is, uh, is somewhat pretty obvious. At least, yeah, this is all I mean, obvious. This has been historically fulfilled. I think more of the tricky ones are the future. Are, as you get further on down. But you, yeah. but this stuff lays the foundation okay. for, the, for, for the future, for this stuff, um, for future prophecy. Nor according uh, to his dominion, which he ruled, for his kingdom shall be plucked up even for others beside those. And the king of the south shall be strong, and a one of his princes, and he shall be strong above them and have dominion. His dominion shall be a great dominion. And this is the king of the south. And in the end of years they shall join themselves together, for the king's daughter of the south shall come to the king of the north to make an agreement. But she shall not retain the power of the arm, neither shall he stand, nor his arm. But she shall be given up, and they that brought her, and he that begat her, and he that strengthened her in these times. But out of a branch of her roots shall one stand up in his estate, which shall come with an army and shall enter into the fortress of the king of the north and shall deal against him and shall prevail. And shall also carry captives into Egypt, their gods, with their princes, and with their precious vessels of silver and gold, and he shall continue more years than the king of the north. So the king of the south shall come into his kingdom, and he shall return into his own land. So the thing that we, as we look at this prophecy of the king of the south and the king of the north, we have to bear in mind that it actually springs out of the previous prophecy. So uh, the point that I'm, the point that I'm showing, the point that I'm trying to show here is that they're actually, the, the, even Daniel 11 may well have been fulfilled in the past. Uh, I I believe it was. Um, so I'm I'm trying to I'm trying to uh, uh, th this is this is the when we, it's, uh, um, but I want to go through it and make sure right. that there aren't any potentially future elements because as we know prophecy loops. E yes, yes. It, um, because the one thing that we learn from prophecy it, has multiple fulfillments. Yeah, uh, because the one thing we learn from history is that we don't learn from history. <laughs> <laughs> uh sadly yes so prophecy loops um yeah because you're not keeping torah and these are prophecies from that are keeping based, torah. That, these are prophecies that are based on the curses yeah yes they are of, of people not keeping torah so they're getting the curses yep um and so the yeah so the so the king of the north is the king of the north is not righteous but prevails for a time but the king of the but the south eventually comes and conquers them this you can find this you can actually find the fulfillment of uh you can actually find the fulfillment of that in um with uh the you can actually find the fulfillment of that with the roman empire and the um and the uh, Arabic kingdoms. Okay. Okay. You can uh, find a possible fulfillment of that there. Well, I, I, I know in general, Rome uh, fulfills a lot of parts of these prophecies. I don't have it all memorized. So, yeah. I mean, the, the thing you have to bear in mind when you're looking at the um, fulfillment of these prophecies is that these prophecies. Um, on one level, are definitely very Israel centric. On one level, uh, as in they're dealing with uh, Israel for sure. Um, yeah, um, and, but it, it, I guess there, even the last during the times of the Gentiles, they're um, maybe even to some degree there. But that's where I'm kind of like I, I I don't know about there, but yeah, yeah. But uh, well, I'm I'm talking about necessary. I'm talking about specifically the prophecies of Daniel, 
Well, right, but some of Daniel's stuff goes into the times of the Gentiles. That's true. So, so the, 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 the ones before the times of the Gentiles, I completely agree. After mm -hmm. that, that's where I, uh, I think it's maybe not so clear. Not so uh, cut and dry. Well, yeah. the thing is, is the, what the the course for the Gentiles is to be adopted. The course for salvation for the Gentiles is to be adopted. Is to be adopted into what uh, is to be adopted into, into, Israel. into Israel. So I, I guess I can go with that because that, I definitely agree with that. Yeah, that's the that's the course of salvation for the Gentiles, which which yeah. makes it funny that when we're talking about salvation, we're not talking about the Gentiles having to keep the law of Israel. Yeah. Anyways um so but that's just that's just a that's just a funny well, inconsistency yeah because here's a curse right yeah and exactly. I, I mean i think we went over this last or sometime before if the curses are still here that would mean the law is still here because the curses are tied to the law exactly yes exactly um okay anyways and when and, he and that's an, just in case people want to know that uh, some big ones for that is Deuteronomy twenty eight and twenty nine. I mean, it's other places too, but that, that's my favorite place for for that. Oh uh, yeah. And, and yes. So the king of the south shall come into his kingdom and shall return to his own land, but his sons shall be stirred up and shall assemble a multitude of great forces, and one shall certainly come and overthrow, pass through, and then he shall he return. And be stirred up even to his fortress, and the king of the south shall be moved with choler, and shall come forth and fight with him, even with the king of the north, and he shall set forth a great multitude, but the multitude shall be given into his hand. And when he hath taken away the multitude, his heart shall be lifted up, and he shall cast down many ten thousands, but he shall not be strengthened by it. For the king of the north shall return, and shall set forth a multitude greater than the former, and shall certainly come after certain years with a great army and with much riches. This actually seems to detail a lot of the um, uh, quote-unquote Christian Arab conflict. Yeah. I can see that. Um, and in those times there shall many stand up against the king of the south, and the robbers of thy people shall exalt themselves to establish the vision. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait a minute. What could that be talking about? And they shall fall, but they shall fall. So the king of the north shall come and cast up a mount and take the most fenced cities and the arms of the south shall not withstand, neither his chosen people, neither shall there be any strength to withstand. But he that cometh against him shall do according to his own will and none shall stand before him. And he shall stand in the glorious land, which by his hand shall be consumed. Wow, that sounds like a lot of America's dealings in the Middle East right now. I haven't been following that, so I, I, I don't have an answer. We go, in there, we go in there supposedly to keep the peace, and all we're really doing is consuming their resources. Uh, resources yeah, yeah. Take... It's, yeah, because the, 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 the facade mm -hmm. is to go in there for peace, so that way the people will accept sending the soldiers right. there and a really and really all we're doing is is stealing we set up camps around their resources and yeah. make it so that they can't have them yeah <laughs> he shall also set his face to enter with with the strength of his whole kingdom and upright ones with him this thus shall he do and he shall give him the daughter of women the daughter of women corrupting her but she shall not stand on his side neither be for him now daughter of women do we do we know what that do we know what that image is in the um, Hebraic prophetic tradition? I, I think it has to do with church believers. Mm -hmm. Um, and so, and a lot of these um, mainstream churches are <laughs> giving up these believers, right? Yeah. But everybody is being set up as a sacrifice. I mean, yeah, in fact, a lot of wars are actually sacrifices because yep. they're they're intending to kill people, mm -hmm. and sometimes even their own people. Um, yep. 
So, you know. so, so that knowing what daughter of women means in the Hebraic prophetic tradition actually helps you to understand that you, you need to know some of the image, some of the image characters um, in order to understand the prophecies uh, given. So what the, we can do, um, we can go find some verses with that. Yeah. Let's do that. We, we can go look at my searching program. That's not very user-friendly, but it works. <laughs> Here, hold on, it's I'm starting up Visual Studio because that's mm. what I'm gonna run it in. Just you don't need it to run it, it's just it's more convenient for me other than the startup time. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's a big program. Yeah. I it's hear. a program to write programs. <laughs> yes. Well, of course. And that's my profession. Uh Oh boy, it's taking longer than normal. Um, oh, I already had one open. Okay, so because yeah. there's a, a, the point. The point. Uh, so we're and what we're what I'm we're trying to get to here is which of this is already stuff that's in the rear view mirror, and which of it is stuff that's in the fore view mirror. So a woman because most of the vision of Daniel is stuff that's already in the rear view mirror. Uh I don't know a percentage, but a good portion of it for sure. Yeah. Um daughter of women. Oh, I'm just doing daughter of women. Yeah. So I'm doing regex in a logical or. Matt, you want to help us with some logical gates here? No, <laughs> I'm actually. Yeah, he's I'm allergic kind of out of it right now. <laughs> he's allergic to logic at this moment. Yeah, yeah. I I was just being a dork. <laughs> um, I figured. <laughs> yeah. Okay, so we have verses with both those terms. So now I then. Let's go put them. Because one note, I can make them look nicer. Because Visual mm. Studio doesn't make things look nice. <laughs> right. Um, so. Oh. Uh, that one's not daughter of women. That that but it it is from Torah, and that's an interesting thing that was For done. Sure. The, that was done um yeah so i mean possibly there may be something related. there may be something in there that's that's yeah, worth that's why i did each word separately and did a uh, logic gate <laughs> he's not paying attention <laughs> no i am i'm just out of it okay well i'm just heckling like you heckle me sometimes oh, yeah <laughs> um, okay and then his sister said to Pharaoh's daughter, okay, I shall like go on. Okay, call it the, okay. Well, yeah, the the line that went around with that. So that's daughter and women. So that's interesting, right? Yeah. But King Solomon loved many strange women together yeah. with the daughter mean, of Pharaoh, mean, women of the pagan Pope, women. Right? Yep. Mm -hmm. Together with the daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Zid Zidonians, and Hittites. Okay, that one I wouldn't think would go too much, but yeah, I, a, a strange women, happen. maybe. But yeah. Anyways. The children of Israel carried away captive of their brethren two hundred thousand women, sons, and daughters, but. Also, and took also away much spoil from them and brought the spoil to Samaria. So 2,000, that's an interesting phrase. Sometimes yeah. applies to times of the Gentiles and sometimes it doesn't because of the two, okay? Right. 2,000 years. So anyways, just keep that in mind. Sometimes it does, sometimes it doesn't. Women, sons, and daughters. So daughters of women, maybe, yep. right? Yep. Spoil and now, from yep. The, and took and took much spoil. This is cor this correlates with the curses in Deuteronomy. Uh huh. 
um, that they would be uh, spoiled and uh, spoiled and driven and smitten. Uh, so, it's interesting. In times of the Gentiles, it'll happen for like two, give or take two thousand years, right? Right. So, mm -hmm. uh, anyways. Now in the turn, now in the turn of Esther, the daughter of Abihail, the uncle of Mordecai, had taken her for who had taken her for his daughter, was come to go in unto the king. She required nothing but what Hegai, the king's chamberlain, the keeper of women, appointed. And Esther obtained favor in the sight of all them that looked upon her. Okay. Well, that, well that's well, so so. All right. Yeah, maybe. Maybe. Job 42 15. And in all the land there were no women found so fair as the daughters of Job, and their father gave them inheritance among their brethren. Uh, no. I yeah. wouldn't say that one. I don't see that one at all. <laughs> no, it's just that the daughters were women. Yeah. King's, uh, king's daughters were among thy honorable women. Upon thy right hand did the queen uh, did stand the queen in gold of Ophir. Mm, maybe, but I, anyways. It doesn't seem, it doesn't seem totally connected. Oh, okay. But it might, uh, but I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. That, that one I could go either way. So, but yeah. well, we'll leave it while we're trying to figure it out, I guess. Rise up, ye women that are at ease. Hear my voice, ye careless daughters. Give ear unto my speech. Uh, well, that one actually, see, this, one this, is more... this is from the prophetic tradition. Okay. That one is definitely connected. I think. Okay, I, I can see um, probably that some of the context was going on, but it's not an actual daughter of women. I think it's just saying yeah, daughters are women, but yeah, I, I think you're right. Because, because some of this other context could apply. Yeah, yeah. and because this is this is direct, the, re the reason I'm, one of the reasons I'm in favor of keeping it is because it comes directly from the Hebrew prophetic tradition and therefore there may yeah. be something that Sure, sure, sure. And, and this is depending on what's going on with these other ones. It's uh, all is well in Zion, right? Yep. Um, yet, yet hear the word of the Lord, O ye women, and let your ear receive the word of his mouth and teach your daughters wailing and everyone her neighbor lamentation. Uh, that one applies. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Which I think goes along with the one just above it, right? It's just yeah. uh, worded a little different on the connection between women and daughters. But yes. I think uh, the part about being at ease and careless matches uh, this one, right? Yep. Even men, women, and children, and the king's daughters, and every person that, that Nebuchadnezzar Adan, the captain of the guard, had left with Gedaliah, the son of Ahaki, uh, Ahikam, the son of Shephan, and Jeremiah, the prophet, and Baruch, the son of Neriah. Mm, yeah, that's more of a historical. Yeah, kind of, I'm, I'm throwing that one out. Yeah, get rid of that. Uh, Lamentations 410, the hands of the pitiful women have sodden their own children, and they were meat in the destruction of the daughter of thy people. Interesting. Uh, their own children, so daughters of women, right? Yep. Yep. And it's kind of going with, along with the context of these others. Yeah. So this is why I didn't do the exact phrase. <laughs> Just yeah. Fact, exactly. I mean, this is a whole other thing. Right? You can do ors, you can do counts, it, you can do a lot, but it is, it's not the yeah. greatest user interface. <laughs> That's the only yeah. bad thing about it. So the hands of pitiful women have, okay, we've done that one. Ezekiel 23, 2. Son of man, there were two women, the daughters of one mother. Oh, there we go. Uh, that's okay. just we need to, look, much we need to look around that. Yeah, yeah. To see what that's talking about. Yeah, I agree. That, that one fits, but we need more context. Ezekiel 23, 10. These discovered her nakedness. Oh, they took well. her sons and her daughters and slew her with the sword, and she became famous among women, for they had executed judgment upon her. Well, this is just a couple of verses later, and it's matching the context of these other ones, right? Yep. 
He shall also set his face to enter in with the, with the strength of his whole kingdom and the upright ones with him. Thus shall he do. And he shall give him the daughter of women, corrupting her. Wow. Now that in connection with Ezekiel 23, this now begins to take on a whole new thing. Corrupting uh, her. Especially the, the famous part. Yep. Yeah. But she uh, shall. The other part, the other contexts are kind of mid matching, but the Ezekiel adds the famous. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Where they had executed judgment upon her. And the Lord's. Okay. And now let's yeah, get. Into... The, 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 the deadly wound. Like, you yep. know, you could, that, that could be what that is. Just, oh, just my out word. Out. Just, Daughter of women. That which came out of the Christian, and that's what, that which came out of the faith of Christ. Right, okay, so where are you? Um, it's it's it, just from the fact that you were as you were talking, there was something that clicked in me okay. as you were talking about. Um, yeah. the Catholic Church. Oh. Yeah, yeah, I, that's what I mean. That's what I, came, that's what came that, out of the faith. That's what came out of the faith of Christ. That's what came out of the way. Yeah, yeah. The that's daughter it's, of women. That's it, the time of the Gentiles. Yeah. The, that's, that's what I was. Church. Because the Catholic Church right now is uniting all of the churches as we speak. Yeah. In the world. Uh, into I, one religion. I. I'd more say the papacy than the Catholic Church, but I because the papacy is the power behind behind mm -hmm. it, right? But I I'm not too worried about which term you use. It's basically the because one's the power, one's the believers, right? Right. But anyways, so the uh, so it, do you see? Uh, do you guys uh, do you guys see the value of actually being able to look at all of these scriptures in context? or not necessarily in context, but look at all these scriptures together that have this phrase in them as we come to try to come to an understanding of. Yeah. Um, it's, it's, it's not perfect, but it is fairly consistent, but some of them that we deleted are kind of like, uh, it is, yeah. just, <laughs> doesn't really apply, but on some of them, we would have to go look at more context, but I, I mean, we can do that. It's just, we're trying to get a general idea right now. Yeah. Right? Yeah, just, um, uh, just as we go forward. Uh, Mosiah 27, 25. And the Lord said unto me, Marvel not that all mankind, yea, men and women, all nations, kindreds, tongues, and people must be born again, yea, born of God, changed from their carnal and fallen state to a state of righteousness, being redeemed of God, becoming his sons and daughters. I, and now I, this I, now actually adds light to this idea of the daughter of women corrupt, the idea of the corrupted daughter of women. That's, um, the women are being corrupted. Uh, I could kind of see that. I, I just it, it's um, a, it, it, they they've corrupted how we become the sons and daughters of Christ. Yeah, yeah. Because they've perverted the way. Yeah. Um, <laughs> and um, here, let me. And so. Uh, I have... Just and to so, add to that real quick, I'm just going to sidetrack you just a little bit. Here's my favorite verse on that. Yeah. I'll read this one. It says, Those who pervert, change the ways of Yahweh are part of the great and abominable church. First Nephi 22, 14. Every nation which shall war against thee, the house of Israel, shall be turned one against another. And they shall fall into the pit which they digged to ensnare the people of Yahweh. And all that fight against Zion shall be destroyed. And that great whore who hath perverted the right ways of Yahweh. Um, that would be the famous one, right? Mm -hmm. Yea, that great and abominable church shall tumble to dust. Dust, that's Satan's domain. Mm -hmm. uh, great shall be the fall of it. And pervert, to turn from truth, uh, to distort for, um, can't define a word with the same word <laughs> misdirecting misinterpreting misapplying 
pervert justice. To turn uh, from the right to corrupt. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, I can think of a lot of churches, including the one I grew up in, that satisfies that. Right. Um, anyways. And so, and so there we, so there we are. It's a greater understanding of this character. So we didn't than do you... the last one. You want to do the last one? Okay, let's take a look at the last one. Now give my son, there are many widows and their daughters who remain in Shiraza and that part of the provisions which the Lamanites did not carry away. Behold, the army of Zenephi has carried away and left them to wander whithersoever they can for food. And many old women do faint by the way and die. Uh, I, 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 I would take this one because the widows and their daughters. Yes. And it's yeah. describing the same situation. So I would say a similar situation, a covenant curse situation. Yeah, mm -hmm. but instead of using women, they're using widows. And yeah. Uh, if you want, um, we can go do something a little more advanced. <laughs> Matt, you want to help me with yeah. my logic? <laughs> oh, fine. <laughs> <laughs> I can barely see it. My, uh, my, oh, as I said, my body, is, is, not working. Yeah. My body oh. is not working the way it should right now. I don't know what's going on. That's fine. Yeah, you break it down. So this is a little tree. So we yeah. can have women. Widow. Yeah. All right. Mm -hmm. Does that make sense? Yep. Yep. And and with an or. So first of all, you need women or widow. And then one of those with daughter. Yep. Yep. Um, so yeah, you're doing a complete logical thought. Yeah. In code. Or I think this is the part that most people have hard. Anyways, well, first of all, you got to do XML. <laughs> I, yeah. I need to make a better interface. Um, but it can get quite advanced. Yes. Um, yeah, outrageous, crazy. Oh, that added a few. Okay. Mm -hmm. So. So the sample I give on where people can download it, mm -hmm. I do one for the Godhead, and um, here I'll just let me. And actually, I probably need to update it, but I'll show you what it comes when you download it. So there's the Godhead. <laughs> and or. <laughs> yeah, actually, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, you know, I could probably update things for Father, and I know I can update things for the Holy Spirit now. It's just, you know, because there's the light of Christ. Um, yeah. But, anyways, it, it's a good start. Yes. And there's just all these similar terms for the, or different terms for the same thing. Mm -hmm. And if you want to do the work, the program can handle it, as we're just seeing with widow and women. Mm -hmm. Okay, so um, it added Genesis, and this is where we have to merge it, <laughs> because I don't really have a tool for that. I think Genesis was new, right? Yep. Yeah. Oh, in fact, the ones that are going to be new is widow. Uh, so, uh they're possibly can be new because if they have women, that's going to be old ones. Then said Judah, Tamar, his daughter-in-law, remain a widow at thy father's house till Shelah, that, um, till Shelah, my son, be grown. For he said, lest peradventure he die also, as his brethren did. And Tamar went and dwelt in her father's house. Mm. Oh, his time. Eh, I, I think no, because yeah. it, it's the daughter that's becoming a widow. Um, yeah so these are we already had here's a possible new one i think if, yeah yes 
Okay. But if the priest's daughter be a widow or divorced and have no child and is returned to her fa- onto her father's house as in her youth, she shall eat of her father's meat, but there shall no stranger eat thereof. No, that one is... That that, that's just a reference that's just a reference as to how the uh widows are taken care of correct um and, and a part of it right because that one has some requirements with it but anyways and thou shalt rejoice before the lord thy god thou and thy son and thy daughter and thy manservant and thy maidservant and the levite that is within thy gates and the stranger and the fatherless and the widow that are among you in the place which the lord thy god hath chosen to place his name here no there that's that's not in the, that's definitely not in the context here no thou shalt rejoice in thy feast thou and thy son and thy daughter and thy manservant and thy maidservant and the levite and the stranger and the fatherless uh, and the widow that are, no, no, okay, these don't have widow uh i think mosiah 21 is new yeah yep and now there was a great mourning and lamentation among the people of Limhi, the widow mourning for her husband and the son and daughter mourning for their father. And that brothers for their brethren. I don't know. That actually might work. That that one I I would actually put in personally. Yeah. So okay, yeah. twenty-seven. That's a twenty-seven twenty-five is a repeat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. That um, one's new. You know, the cry of widows mourning for their husbands, and also of fathers mourning for their sons, and the daughter for the brother, yea, the brother for the father, and thus the cry of mourning was heard among all of them. Yeah, mourning daughter of the widow. I would yep. put that one. And the context, what's going on matches. Yeah, mm-hmm. yes, it does. And this one's the one we repeat. used to go find. So we added a couple. Yeah. So, um, it seems like daughter of women are believers that have gone the wrong way and are giving curses. Yep. Um, are, in- could, are, are inheriting the curses thereof. Yeah, I mean, we could go through it again with that understanding, but I... Well, with that understanding, it seems as if, if he's referring to them as daughters of women... He is now referring them as mortal being, or, you know, like, of course they're mortal, but uh, I'm talking about they have inherited or chosen to inherit the mortal, the things that come with being. Well, uh, or I don't. Yeah, okay, I, let, 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 let me get my thoughts together. Hold on. Uh, I, I can kind of see what you're saying. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, he, they're no longer referred to as daughters of God because they're no longer in the covenant. They're no right, longer right. in and, the covenant. And, That's and, what I'm trying to say. And, and Moroni, I think it's Moroni 7. Let me, let me go see. Because I think Moroni 7 has something similar to what you're trying to say. Oh, yeah. Um, but let's, let's go double check. Uh, if anybody wants to double my check, I would like that. Double your check. <laughs> Let's see, chapter seven. So, uh, that are the peaceable followers of Christ. I mean, you're going out, first you're living it and then you're teaching it, right? Okay, um, a sufficient hope. This is a uh, your peaceable walk with the children of men. There we go. I think that's what I'm looking for. Among um, here, here they're saying children of men are non-believers, and here you are, believer, acting good among the non-believers. Yes. Mm-hmm. Um, because the way they are acting around the non-believers, you're not giving in. You're yeah, so. You're not leaving. An officer of peace is not (laughs) someone who just stays quiet for the sake of peace. A publisher of peace is someone who publishes the way to get Yahweh's peace, which Mm -hmm. is teaching Torah. Because that's how you, when you keep his ways, he will give you his peace. And Mm -hmm. uh, the sons of Alma are. 
a good example I have in another recording. If you guys want to go watch it another time, that gets into those details. Um, yeah, here we go. So, uh, so hopefully, Erica and Kelsey, you can see that a lot of Daniel chapter 11 is also already in the rear view mirror. It's, um, it's, it's, uh, it, and so a lot of times, a lot of times people, uh, a lot of times people overcomplicate prophecy too. Uh, yeah, and I think a lot of it is to uh, deceive on purpose. Um, I think some are doing it on purpose and some because they don't know any better. Um, so I think there's a mixture. Um, so, so the king of the north here, who is it that... Um, who is, uh, the, so the king of the north here is clearly... Um, the and clearly the is clearly as I see it is clearly pagan Christianity. Uh, let's read through this again because I, I can definitely see that on the daughters. Um, yeah. so he let's also, start with, sorry, go ahead. Okay. okay, so let's start in verse 15 then. Okay. So the king of the north shall come and cast up a mount and take a uh, mount as a king. Um, it's a mount. It has to do with worship, right? Yes, and um, yes, and it's also it's also often a kingdom as well. Right, as in, yeah, yeah. Okay. Take the most fenced cities, and the arms of the south shall not withstand. Neither his chosen people, neither shall there be any strength to withstand. Yeah, I, 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 I could go with that. But he that cometh against him shall do according to his own will, and none shall stand before him. And he shall stand in the glorious land by which his hand shall, which by his hand shall be consumed. So, um, possibly, this could be the reformers, right? Yeah, because they did it according to their own will. They, I, that's true. They did some good. Okay. They, they help people wake up to the problems that were around, but... And then they presented um, a new problem. Right. And I, yeah. they, they, they created new problems in trying to fight the old one because they wanted to do it their way instead of Yahweh's way. Yep. And so, uh, and so now we come into verse 17, the one with the, that mentions the daughter of women. He shall also set his face to enter with the strength of his whole kingdom. And upright ones with him. Thus shall he do, and he shall give him the daughter of women, corrupting her. Yeah. But he, she shall not stand on his side, neither before him. And after this shall he turn his face unto the isles, and shall take many, but a prince for his own behalf shall cause the reproach offered to by him to cease without his own uh, reproach. Okay. He shall come turn upon him so one thing i see in 17 okay is mm -hmm. that and so some of this is kind of not exactly but i think it fits the pattern because mm -hmm. here's this this king giving up his his daughter um meaning leaving her as in I, i've already mentioned how the current power structure is going to morph into something else meaning mm -hmm. he's going to have to give up his current church and yes. i see that in a lot of places and even some movies that i i believe follows prophecy um, yes quite well and, and it's in a but, lot of them that, yeah but the, and the thing that we have to remember is that this has happened more than once Oh yeah. Um, the, so some of this is uh, there's the macro um, cycles, but then there's the major one, which I think is actually the real focus in here. But it's it's yeah, because um, I, I I mean 
to one sense, Protestant churches are doing this right now, but mm -hmm. I think this is more talking about the the papacy. Yeah, yeah. Um, having to having to give up having to give up the uh, church that they go that they're that they're running to to to, to take another one. Yes. Yes, and and I think the big change that's going to happen is that they're going to take out the Christianity, quote unquote, out of it. Right. They're just going to go full on pagan. But there will be, but the, or more, the, very much more close to it, anyways. And the and the, part of that is part of that is going to be a Sunday law. Uh, yeah. Just like yeah. as was done with Constantine. Yeah. Yeah. It's on the book. So it's called the Blue Laws. Yeah, it's but the, yeah. Well, just wait till they and, j and just wait till they start enforcing them. Yeah. Well. I don't believe Saturday or Sunday. <laughs> yeah, but I, I'm It'll just saying. That, that, but I'm just saying that there's a yeah, yeah. there will be a Sunday law. Yeah. So people who don't worship on Sunday all the time even will find themselves under persecution, which is why the Jews had to abandon their their um, their lunar Sabbath because their the, lunar Sabbath and the papacy the, forced them to well, go to a continuous seven day week. Yeah, to go, and go with Hillel second, the Hillel second calendar. Well, no, that's why Hillel second calendar happened. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. They were forced to go from one thing, and they came up with another. Yeah, which solves problems with postponent days, which is contrary to Torah. But anyway, <laughs> yes. Um, but so yeah, yeah. So the thing is, is. It's what we see here is that the more things change, the more things stay the same. <laughs> yeah. Um, and he shall turn his face to the isles. Okay. So that's going to the land beast. Yep. And shall take many, but a prince for his own behalf shall cause the reproach offered by him to cease. So somebody is going to stand up to this sea beast. Yeah, well, I would say that's mighty and strong one. Without his own reproach, he shall cause it to turn upon him. Then he shall turn his face toward the fort of his own land, but he shall stumble and fall and not be found. Huh. Are you sure, mighty and strong? Oh. Then shall stand up in his estate a raiser of taxes in the glory of the kingdom. Maybe he shall stumble and fall and not be found. This is this a prophecy of Joseph Smith? I don't know. Possibly. He stood up. He stood up against, and then shall stand up in his estate a raiser of taxes. I'm not sure what raiser tithing. of taxes is. A raiser of taxes, improper tithing. Oh, well, I can kind of see that, but I the glory of the king. Well, but I might be twisting, but that. I, but it's interesting. It's it's something to look at. It's a possibility. But within few days he shall be destroyed. Neither in ang but within a but within few days he shall be destroyed. Neither in anger nor in battle, and in his estate shall stand up a vile person to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom. But he shall come in peaceably and obtain the kingdom by flatteries. <laughs> well, that's the first part that's is Joseph room. Smith. The second part is yeah. Brigham Young. But and then uh, the well, the third and we can we might be looking at the third part right now. Uh, well, let's keep reading. And with, the, with, blood, with the arms of a flood, that yeah, could be the Greater Exodus. With the arms of a flood shall they be overflown from before him and shall be broken. Yea, also the prince, yea, also the prince of the covenant. And after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully. For he shall come up and shall become strong with a small people. He yeah. shall so, so this is, here we're talking about the Antichrist. Wow. Well. 
That's well, at least that's how a lot of people interpret this. But well, is okay. that correct? But well, is that I correct? almost wonder, I, and, and this is where we have to uh, work it out more. But yeah, if if the first is Joseph Smith, the second could be Brigham Young, and the third does kind of give things that describe the Mighty One. Okay. The cross um, of the covenant. He's not described very complimentary, like he's he's a shall stand up a vile person. Well, oh, and oh, and stand maybe up the world. Well, it, it, you know, I, we we okay. need to Let, look and let's, speak. Let's, go let's by actually by. look that up in Strong's. Let's look that up in Strong's. Yeah, yeah. Let's. I, I like we we like Bible Hub here. Okay. Well, it's got a direct connection to strong as anything. Yeah, so. just easier. And it lets us look at more too, but anyway. Yeah. Eleven. Yeah. What verse number was it? Of vile. Fifteen was it fifteen? No, twenty-one. Twenty one. Twenty one. Yep. Eleven twenty one. That's by a contemptible person who has not been given the honor of royalty. That's the New International Version. Berean Standard and display to the despicable to esteem to despise. Okay, so that's not necessarily a bad thing to be despised. Oh, yeah, that's true. That's true. I mean, because the wicked despise the righteous. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and who oh, is he coming and, right after? Brigham Young. Right. If if it is that okay, I, I mean, uh, yeah. going off if of that's that assumption. the connection, if that's the connection, right, right. If that's, if that if that's the connection. appropriate connection. Um, so the majority, because I I mean I have stuff in the Book of Mormon that says he's going to be teaching Torah. Um, right. So, and as we all know here, <laughs> that stirs up <laughs> Torah is despised. Yeah, which. <laughs> Is could be a reason why he's being a dis called a despised person, right? Okay, that's that's possible. Uh, but there's uh, let's and so yeah, royal okay. honors will not be given to him. That does also sound like, but he will come in a time of peace and seize seize the kingdom by intrigue. By intrigue, that speaks against it being the mighty and strong one. He will seize the kingdom by intrigue. Yeah, the seas kind of goes again. Because that, that's more that that's he rich. takes it rather than giving it. Right. Um, and that the mighty one won't do it that way. And, fact, and by intrigue. By intrigue. Uh, it's which uh, means movement like lawyers. Look at that. Yeah. No, by no. Vain that, deceit. Yes. Yeah. So I, I, this is not talking about the mighty and strong. No, no, that 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 part right there uh, gets rid of that seals idea. That, that seals it. Yeah, because it says in the original. It says that's what lawyers. Original. Original. Uh, yeah. So, for, so for me, that seals it. This is not about the mighty and strong one. Uh, I agree there. I agree. But though. it yeah. is about. Uh, but it is about someone taking who 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 stands to take the kingdom, obtain the kingdom. But he will obtain the uh, uh, that he will a vile person to whom they shall not give the honor of the kingdom. But he shall come in peaceably and obtain the kingdom by flatteries. Oh, that's uh, what it, this is flatteries, isn't it? Yeah, the, the smoothness. It's lawyer speak, um, and what the Antichrist do in the Book of Mormon, right? Oh yeah, yeah they totally flatter. And with yeah. the arms of, and with the arms of a flood shall they be overflown from before him, and shall be broken. Yea, also the prince of the covenant. Uh, so the flood. The covenant is uh, prince of the covenant. So this one could be mighty one. Could the flood yeah. could could be referring to the greater exodus um the, the, which flee which flees before his approach which moves before his approach i guess well it, it, it overflow them 
before this the the one just the, you know mm -hmm. doing the flatteries yeah and shall be broken he'll break up his kingdom yeah so whoever's in 22 is breaking up 23's kingdom right 21's kingdom or yeah, yeah that's what i meant sorry yeah and <laughs> also the prince of the covenant um so he's bringing a covenant with him well yeah and and so in verse 23, are we talking about man uh, verse 22 or are we talking about? Verse I was 20? just reading 22. Yeah, but it, it would be. Uh, but let's go on to 23. Let's see. And after the and after the league made with him, he shall work deceitfully. So is this talking about 21 or 22? Um, or he shall come up that's and shall where a chiasm would be helpful. <laughs> and shall become strong with a small people. Well, let's go to Bible Hub. Because strong with the small people. I, I, yeah, let's do Bible Hub again. Yeah. It's it's generally helpful. <laughs> Sometimes. Yeah, not always, but a lot of times. Erica, Kelsey, keeping up? Are you enjoying are you are you enjoying this discussion? Yeah, I'm still here. Yeah. I'm, still, I'm, I'm I'm a big listener. <laughs> yeah, just and just and just making sure that uh, are, are you getting anything out of this? Okay, so yeah, I definitely am. Three. Cool. All right. After allegiance is made with him, so it's unclear who the him is. He will act deceitfully. Um, so I think that's back to 21. Mm -hmm. Where you will rise to power with only a few people. Well, see that part I'm, I'm confused about, to be honest. So um, let's take a look and see if there are any key words. Uh, take a look at the interlinear, see if we can find something in there. Uh, sure, sure. Okay. Uh, a number oh as with small okay so it's uh, okay so the small would go with you mm -hmm. and become strong his league so a league is like a a group of people we've made a covenant with right a pact a pact yes. so that's the word so this is so here we we could well be talking about a secret combination here yeah and that's that would be few and that would go with the context with it being secret combination because mm -hmm. uh, those are generally kept to the few right yes yes so i i think that's a, a good possibility there mm -hmm. so Especially we're talking the, about Dude, 66. You know, the more I'm looking at this now. Uh, let's, I wonder how League is. Because now 22 doesn't make sense in the way that we were looking at it. Because we go from this vile person gains the kingdom by flattery creates a secret combination that's 21 23 but somewhere in there well it, it depends let's okay so because if so if 22 is the center 21 and 23 could go together all right um, yeah yeah what's so 20 and and 24 four. Good God. Shall enter peaceably even upon the fattest places of the province, and he shall do that which his fathers uh, have not done. Taxes and fathers. fattest could go together. He scat he shall scatter among them among the he shall scatter among them the prey and spoil and riches, yea, and he shall forecast his devices against the strongholds, even for a time. We have a chiasm here. Yeah, because the, the destruction and scattering goes together. Uh yep. 
and he shall stir up his power and crit and twenty five. Stir up his power. That's going to be twenty five goes with nineteen in battle. So, um, though the one thing is still a little confusing, even though we're seeing a chiasm here. Um, this one, if if this one's the good guy, it's a little out of place because I I don't. Yeah, no, the, much... the one that we thought was the good guy was 22, remember? Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry, sorry. Um, I, I don't see too much that would... So is this the specify... prince of the everlasting covenant, or is this the prince of a different covenant? Yeah, what covenant? And right now, just looking through it more, I would think it's this um, pact, possibly, mm -hmm. right, that yeah. um, gets brought up later maybe. right um and another thing you know i like to call it the fifth kingdom whatever you want to call it the modification <laughs> of the fourth part mm -hmm. of that is uh they're coming in peace right yeah it, but he shall come peacefully um, yep and that's that's the importance of realizing that all of this that all of Daniel's vision basically coalesces into the vision of the four of the kingdoms. Yeah. So I I'm right now I'm looking more. I think it's earlier was not Brigham Young, but I mean we'd yeah. have to. Yeah, I'm, I'm the, thinking. You're, I'm but thinking it you're could be right. a possible possible repeat. But this is where we need to um, sketch it out more. Um, because I, even though I call my Paul King Brigham, it's actually it's Brigham Young following the pattern of Satan, right? Which this guy is doing also, right? Right. Mm -hmm. Um, but um, Brigham Young is and the very... other thing that we the other thing that we have to bear in mind is that the Daniel eleven is given in context of him talking to Darius, king of the Medes. So this is this could be this could be in political context. Possibly. But never, but never is anything given from the Lord that is purely physical. All things given from the Lord are spiritual. Spiritual. Yeah. Um I I don't know how to tie it into that right now. Um, but I, I do see what you're saying. I just I don't know how to tie it in. Because yeah. um this uh, comes out of Rome mm. and not Persia. Right. I mean, this clearly, I but do think we are clearly talking believe, about, sorry. Uh, well, I do think right here it's talking about the fifth kingdom. Yeah. But I do also believe it, it comes out of the fourth, but it's also a mixture of the previous four. Right. Um. So, as if, well, if you look at Catholic, if you look at Catholicism and Christianity, it really is a mix of Mithraism, yeah. uh, which is the Persian religion, yeah. uh, and it's very much with with um, well, it's got uh, with it with the Babylon Mystery religion too, right? and the Greco-Roman religions. Yes, I, I just think it, it's going to in the fifth kingdom. It's going to be more blatant than it because right now it's uh there's still so that obvious. veneer there's still that veneer of christ well they've they've baptized it as they they actually say this we've baptized the pagan traditions in their yeah. official so documentation. It, sorry go ahead it's much that the funky religion paganists from back when where they would wear those funny hats and make little statues of men wearing those funny hats uh, Are you talking of uh, Mithraism? Uh, Mithraism was actually the uh, myth. Uh, Mithraism was actually the worship of the bull. Mm -hmm. But did they wear a certain hat? Uh, uh, I, I know that was uh, Nineveh. That's the that the I know the Druids wore hats for their ceremonies. Um, no. uh, like Babylon. No, I think I'm, if I remember, Babylon did it. Um, Babylon yeah. did it, yeah. 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 It's a connection that goes all the way back to to like the, which they bring it back 
and it's not a part of the Masons, but it's that other part where they have that hospital. I'm sorry, I forget the name. And they ride those little cars at parades. Oh, yeah, yeah. Um, Shriners? Shri yeah, Shriners. the Shriners. Yeah, hospital. yeah. It, it's, it goes back, to, like their stuff from the Shriners, it goes back to Mithraism, if you look into, into it. Yeah. And then... I was looking at some of their little statues from back then, anciently, and they those little hats. The only difference is the top of the hat is a little bit different, but it's a little hat, somewhat same same color. Um, yeah, well, I think the Shriners hat is red and flat, not like a well. Let, let's, yes, come it's on. a red hat. Yeah. Uh, the fe uh, uh, are we talking uh, somewhat like a fez only without the tassel? Yeah, it yeah. Has, uh, yeah. Huh? Uh, so here, yeah. yeah, it's got the tassel. It's kind of interesting because tassels. Yeah, yeah. But anyways, um. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Shriner hat. Yeah. Yeah, but yeah, that's a part of it. That's part of the myth. That's part of the Mithraic thing. Uh, well, then there's the crescent moon. It all goes back to Rome, you guys. Like when um, they talk about it, it all just, goes back to the same place. Rome, Rome to me is Satan, by the way. Um, it all goes yeah. back to him everywhere. It's yeah, the yeah. same thing. So yep. if you twist this uh, counterclockwise 90 degrees, that's Islam. Mm -hmm. Yep. Um, and just on the calendar, I've come across some research that shows that the going by the first liver actually comes from um, Medo Persia. Um, yeah. Because they, they, they yeah. love their crescent, which represents them, Satan. And, anyways, that's another subject. But, oh, also, here's another little interesting little tidbit. I'm not sure what to do with yet um, since we're on the calendar. So, in the the full thirty cycle, um, we get six. There's six worship and rest days, right? Because the two new moons days and the four weekly Sabbaths. That is one fifth, and uh, I I don't know how it applies yet, but I just find that ratio interesting. Because uh, it's with King Noah and um, Joseph and with Egypt and taxing the people. So I'm, I'm not sure what to do with it, but it's just this is it connected or is it not? I don't know. Anyways. Yeah, that's, a, that's an interesting thought. Yeah, I, I don't know what to do with it yet. <laughs> I just have those connections. I don't but know. Yeah, so going back, to da going back to Daniel 11, we're okay. looking at what we're i think what we're looking at here very much is the mystery religion takeover of the world yeah the thing that a lot of people think is that the takeover of the world is politically motivated but it's not uh so it, in the book of Mormon and in the old testament there's tons of examples how the church women are controlling the king's the government it's it's the church it's the whore that's doing this she, yeah the whore is behind it i mean she's using the, the government to do it but so he's he's it. using he's using the language of kings and kingdoms um he's using political language but it's always the what he's referring to here is the battle between Oops. what is what he's referring to here is a battle between um, two different ways of uh, two different ways of bringing about uh, the satanic religion uh, like a battle of two different secret combinations um just like uh uh, through the looking glass or the or the more modern Alice in Wonderland that uh, mm -hmm. the red queen and the white queen yep which mm -hmm. off your, your head that's history France yep mm -hmm. uh, and the white queen doing it peacefully and I, I, I think 
in both editions, she has taken an oath not to harm anybody peacefully. Yep. He shall enter peaceably even in the fattest places of the province. And he shall do that which his fathers have not done or his father's fathers. He shall scatter among them the prey and the spoil and the riches. Yea, and he shall forecast his devices against all the strongholds, even for a time. And he shall stir up his power and his courage against the king of the south with a great army. And the king of the south shall be stirred up, up to a battle with a very great and mighty army. But he shall not stand. For they shall forecast devices against him. Yea, they that feed of the portion of his meat shall destroy him, and his army shall overflow, and many shall fall down slain. And this, if you're looking at this from a last day's perspective, where we are, this is why some this is why some people believe that this that what we're seeing right now is actually Act One, and that they have a second that the, in the um, and the Northern sure. Kingdom is coming yeah i i can see that because i i like i said i it's going to morph somehow and the king of the the king of the south will be put down by the king of the north so here we're while this is something that has happened multiple times throughout history here we're seeing how it may again play out before our view yes because as we have learned, the only thing that we learn from history is that we don't learn from history. Well, the majority don't learn. <laughs> Some do. Yeah. Um, but those who do learn have to sit back and watch those that don't and um, partake of the consequences also. Yes. Yeah. They, we don't get to avoid the consequences. Yea, the, yea, they that feed of the portion of his meat shall destroy him and his army shall overflow. Many shall fall down slain. Um, and the inter- uh, the interesting thing is, is that as you're watching the situation today, you can actually see some of this playing out as the old guard of the West falls to a new system that is rising, that is, uh, that is um, comprised of Russia and China. Uh, possibly. That's a possible. Uh, and I'm, I'm, no. and like I said, anything that uh, anything that is conject, anything that is not stated specifically in the scriptures, needs to be checked. Oh, sure, sure, sure. Um, so, you- so uh, uh, have you seen my pet goat? Yes. Two? So, oh, uh, maybe not two, but I think I've seen. Uh, I, I, I saw. I think let me make sure. I think because I, I I think the one that most people see is two because I think there's a three and okay. a as well, and I don't think you can find number one. Yeah. Okay. Then it must be my pet goat too. Yeah. Uh, okay. Yeah. That, that's what I've seen then. Uh, what it... screen am I sharing? Um, let's see. I share that one. Yeah. Oh um oops yeah yeah i've seen but yeah i take good too i've seen that one so i I mean take it with a grain of salt right but i do uh that one looks like it's someone's where's the actual one oh there it is um this now this wasn't done somewhat with the gift of prophecy from Yahweh. I do believe this is done by someone who is in the know of their evil plans. It just like you have on mainstream TV and movies and all that jazz, right? Mm-hmm. But it, it's interesting though, because it does bring out China and Russia in it, but they both fall. China um, okay. was nuclear I, I'm pretty sure it was nuclear because it was the green liquid. China. Well, that actually, I can see China how it submitted. I, I, I'd have to go find it, but I think China submitted. That's a really interesting. That's um, really interesting. Oh. So. Oh. Hablemos. I, oops. 
That's really interesting. Potencia telefónica. Because I can see it. I can see it working. Oh, okay. The thing so, is, one or two, one or the other of them has to, one or the other of them has to go. Of these two clashing powers. Oh, okay. So that that was a mistake. Um, I'm trying to. Uh, yeah. So th that's the uh, Antichrist, right? Because all the occultics, anyways. Yeah. Um, yeah. See, there's the amusing TV to program. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, that's. I think is that where the statue is falling. Okay, well, yeah, there's... Is that one seen? Uh, oh, is that... Yeah, that's definitely... Uh, uh, that one, I think, is Africa. Mm -hmm. Look at that. That's Russia. Yeah, that's true. The sickle the and the hammer. The hammer and sickle, yeah, they're falling. Um, and the green, I, I just, I think that's more like slime and nuclear. Uh, but yeah. who knows for sure? Well, is, they do, but they're not going to tell us. <laughs> no, that's really that's really actually very interesting. Mm -hmm. um this isn't prophecy this is them trying no i'm aware i'm aware of that but it's still i think he's making uh an announcement over the video oh, okay the video. no i'm not I, just yeah you. oh yeah no i'm, I'm well i'm just thinking I, I, i'm this actually so, China submits. Interesting. It was, it, China well, was not destroyed. And, what's it, that? It, it wasn't destroyed. It submitted. Yeah. yeah. Reluctantly, but I, I mean. Uh, and look at who they're submitting. Well, um, yeah. Those are dry bones. Yep. The one who's uh, promoting breaking of the law. Yep. Those are dry bones. Yep. And they're dry because they have no oil. And what is the oil? The Holy Spirit, the law. Yep. The but law. Yep. But the law is associated with the bones also. But these ones are dry bones. Dry bones is that you're breaking it. The wet bones is that you're keeping it. Right. Or anointed with oil, because that what makes them wet. But anyways, right. Um, which is this is another. It could very well be another figure of the Antichrist. Yes, um, it is. In fact, there's the flower. Um, yep. Which <laughs> would go with that also, and the cape. The cape generally mm -hmm. in the cult is of power, right? Yep. Yeah. That's uh, yeah. Um, this could be a couple things, but it could be like a noose. Because yeah. he's supposed to be hanged for what he's doing, right? Right. Um, but I, that could be taken a couple ways. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, this the, from what from what we've read and what I'm seeing here, this is like a beautiful exposition of Daniel chapter eleven. Uh, parts of it, anyways. Yeah. So, his stick got longer, right? Oh. Ah, uh, yep. That's how you know. Yeah, that's that. that that's the the ring of power. Yep. All right. Uh, mm -hmm. he, he, you can see him do it even now. Uh, mm -hmm. I wonder if the tiger has to do with the year. But anyways, um, I, I don't know the Chinese cycle. I I know it has twelve. I just I, I yeah. Well, the the presence of the tiger indicates that it's China anyway. Um, I I could see that. I wonder if it more with the year, but maybe it's the China. Yeah. And, and see this coming out of the mouth is getting longer. Yeah. You see that? In, in fact, they're using it like um those party horns. Right? Yeah. Blowers. 
Um, I forget what they're called, but it, it's yeah, blow tickers, blow um, tickers. But, <laughs> oh, shut up. <laughs> uh, so the fireworks in the background could be a couple things, right? It could be celebration. Yeah, it could be this, uh, this happen that this happens at a time of celebration. It could right. be that. Because I think the timing right now, this is not um, stones coming down, which no. I could somewhat because of the polar configuration stuff, right? Yeah, but but just because of what's being portrayed here, I don't think that's the stuff. I no, I, I think this is more celebration. I'm just saying. I think this is actually more. Uh, this is actually more of a covert announcement of timing. Uh, yeah. And then the Antichrist. Yep. In, in comes in, the Antichrist. In, in more obvious form. I mean, the other one is too, right? But this one is what more of what people are expecting. Yeah. Uh, um, so, uh, like the bones, the dry bones is the hidden part. This mm -hmm. fleshy part is the part that they're exposing, right? You're right. And, okay, anyways, that's a, a cult. Yeah, that's um, so a cult right there. A cult. Right there. Yeah. Uh, a cult, the exposed part. <laughs> yeah. Um, the and they're showing uh the bones, uh as yeah. dry bones, um and and weakness. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, the programming. Uh, there was a snake that looked like a snake coming out of the head. Yep. Um, so uh, this could be a couple things. So, well, that's the boat that he's on. Yeah, yeah, but look. Yeah. In the square, you have yeah the, uh, well, shapes inside of shapes inside of shapes. Okay, um, yeah. this is a cult where uh, the Melchizedek. Oh, that just wow, that reminds me of a certain room in every temple. Oh yeah, um, yeah, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. The skying, it's called scrying. I, I'm, I'm yes. sure you could probably scrying. say it better, but I, I think scrying. That's what, scrying. Cool. Okay. I believe that's what the um, the reflection pool is based off of. Yes, because everybody's going there to do the reflection, um, and it's even in the proper shape. Mm -hmm. So, anyways, but um, a shape inside a shape inside a shape is of the cult, and uh, a lot of people will say that the Melchizedek star or you know the square inside the square yeah mm -hmm. uh, that's the occult that's not a yellow right um anyways uh oh, so this that fire coming out is kind of like my statement i said a couple of days ago about what comes out of the mouth of the dragon will cause you to be burned yes all right um because that's just Breathing fire like the dragon, but anyways. Yep. Sorry. So the face of a lamb, the uh, uh, speaks like a dragon. Yeah, yeah. Uh, and then there's the. Oh, the Anubis. Uh, is that the Anubis. Right one? Yeah, that's the Anubid head. Yeah. yeah, which is what Batman's based off of. But anyways. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, that's yeah. looks like a heart. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I'm not sure what to do with that. But anyways, uh, falling apart of the past, right? Yep, everything's falling apart. Yeah, or you know the destruction, right? Yeah, whether if it's on purpose because yeah. I, I actually to some degree i think it's on purpose but anyways yeah, yeah, well, that one's shiva the the yeah. indian god of destruction yeah. followers
course, because um, the fish going after mm -hmm. the wrong. Um, <laughs> the tower, but. Um, oh, yeah. I, So, uh, this is going to, I don't know, like, it, probably everybody here has seen it, but it's going to show a little something that goes along with something I said earlier. Yeah. Uh, I mean, Did you see the Twisted Helix? Yep. Mm -hmm. uh, I don't, other than it's just twisting. Somehow that's connected to Satan. I'm not exactly sure how. Um, it's uh, well, I mean the the helix is uh, the helix is a uh, it is an occult symbol, right? Um, I, I just I don't know how, but anyways, but it, it, one obvious one to me is the twisting that's going on. But um, anyways, <laughs> fact. Uh, the supposed Jacob's Ladder in the Manti Temple is patterned after that, not actually yeah. Jacob's Ladder. That's so actually the ladder is straight up, not twisted up. But... Mm -hmm. Army of Bones. Oh, army or merchants? Because yeah, like business. Yeah, but it's uh, but they're all but they're all drones. They're just standing there while things yeah, yeah. happen. But I, I I don't think this is like a normal army as we would think of. No, it. no, it's it's not it's not an army that it's not an army like we think of. But it is the army with which they're conquering the world. Yes, because they're 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 doing it more co covert right now. Yeah. And the Antichrist destroys the secret combinations. Uh well, not completely, but he's he's devouring his children for his yes. pur own purposes. So he's still yeah. keeping it, but not with those ones, with other ones. Yeah. Just like, well, but not with the one that we recognize. That's what I'm saying. Uh right, right. The one that we recognize right now, the one that we look at and say, this is evil, that's going to be destroyed. Right, yes. But he's gonna yeah, and, what, it and, and it will and it, he will usher in a new era of quote unquote righteousness. <laughs> oh, well, peace. I, it, peace. Um, well, it, the so devil has his own definition of righteousness. That's why yeah, it's that's quote unquote air quotes yeah, meaning but, not genuine. I, I just I and maybe it's because I'm not as familiar with these prophecies as I ought to be, but I I don't think it's. I think it's tied in prophecy to peace and not righteousness. Well, yeah, it's yeah, it's more peace. Yeah. Well, it's what the world would refer to as righteous. Well, that's yeah. that's the world calls peace righteousness. Yeah, but that's because they don't know the scriptures. Because I mean, well, but I, I but that's but I, but this is what I'm talking about. Is that's why I put the quotes around. Yeah. Okay. All right. Well, I was just trying to not because genuine. it's not real righteousness. It's world definition righteousness. Yeah, yeah, I I can go with that. It's just I think in in prophecies it's called as a peace and not righteousness. But anyway. and 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 what did Jesus say about it? The righteousness of man and is wickedness in the eyes of God. Right, and he also said uh, his ways will divide the people. Right. Yep. Which exactly. is the opposite of, of peace. The righteousness it's, of man is all about unifying. It, it gives us inner peace, but it can also make <laughs> life a little harder. But because we take his yoke upon us, he's going to help us through it, and he'll take the brunt of it. Yes, right? it's, but we still have. It to is become. Satan who unites. Christ divides his people out from Satan's people. Um, I, I would say it a different way, but I think I, I I agree with you. I would just state it slightly different, but yeah, yeah. Uh, because I I think it's more Yeshua unites and Satan divides. Because um, mm. when we've 
when Israel and the Restoration started following Satan, that's when they were divided. Well, that's because uh, well, that may be, but that's what with, is... but that's with people who had already accepted the covenant. Generally speaking, Satan gathers his people together. What was Nimrod doing? Uh, well, yeah, but the building of the... gathers his people together too. But the thing is that they're they're not unified satans they're they're just have acceptance yeah. of each other yeah. rather than being I can unified see, yeah i can see that yeah um, i mean i think that i think that probably i just need to find a different word for it but i uh, i think that um, but so but i have the idea physically the idea, together, yeah. but in yeah. belief they're actually separate right um because the primary belief of Satanism is do as thou wilt. Yeah. Um, I mean, he has some preferences. And the more you follow his preferences, the more he'll put you up his ladder to use you. But mm -hmm. ultimately, he just wants us to do it different than the right way, even if it's just a little. That's true. Yeah. Um, That's true. It only takes a little. Uh, I, I find it interesting that they're using an egg for a head. Uh -huh. yeah. An egg can refer to a messiah. Uh -huh. So they're in the yellow is like the yoke has been broken. Yep. Uh, anyways, it's just a, a messiah um, can be rep represented by eggs. And so mm -hmm. I think this is the anti-messiah, antichrist breaking up after he's been programmed and prepared mm -hmm. possibly yeah, that's possible uh, but anyways and his head's empty but <laughs> yeah. and so here's him orchestrating it all right anyways yeah. so there's uh, the angel of light perhaps well, Hearing here's an angel of light, but I, I mean, so this full moon is yeah, <laughs> to do with that's Satan stuff. Um, and also, this dance gets you dizzy, which um, is a technique for uh, cults and occults to... Disorientation. Disorientation, which means you're more willing to accept stuff from demons. Yep. In fact, the wailing at the wall is the same thing. It's to get the yeah. same effect. And it comes from Kabbalah, not Torah. Yeah, it's uh, Yeshua it's speaks about the against those practices, uh, yeah. if you ask me. But anyways. Peace one, right? Yep. And you see the sun, <laughs> I think, signifying full sun worship. Yep, yep. Coming, because it's coming up. Mm -hmm. Right? Which is why there will be a Sunday law. Yeah. old one going away right yep and that one's got this the cross the supposed symbol of christianity right yep mm -hmm. where this one is full of the occult yep pagan. So what we have in Daniel 11, just to take it back to daniel 11 what we have yeah i, I think it matches uh, yeah and what we have is the prophecy fulfilled in olden times, fulfilled at the time of, um, fulfilled at the time of Constantine, that will be fulfilled again before the coming of our Lord. 
as one gives way to another. Yeah. So I would say this is the fourth coming into the fifth. Yes. So that's what Daniel 11 is about. And so it's not completely, it, while some of it is in the rear view, it's not completely. No, it's not com completely. And, and some of this, I, I mean, a lot of it correlates, the, the part that mm -hmm. we watched. Some of it could be the way that they prefer to have it happen, even if it doesn't happen that way, right? Because their yeah. plans don't always... Uh, come to fruition even though they're trying but the I but the uh, i mean the, the, sorry i got a question Rick. did the mormon church also incorporate kabbalah teachings yes 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 well, yeah that's what i thought yeah yeah fact, the, the, the mormon um, practice is full of kabbalah yeah um and and so if you get into the kind of Hebrew rooter Mormon type of circles, most of them celebrate it and think it's a good thing instead of being a bad thing. <laughs> Seriously, they, they they think it's good when it's actually bad. Yeah. Um, but yeah. Yeah. I, I, at one point in my life, I liked Kabbalah. Uh, I, I, I never got into that one. And, and there were some things I almost started doing that's from it, but then I Yahweh woke me up to it, and so mm -hmm. I, I didn't go down that. But well, I was, uh, yeah, I, I did. I, I, in my time, I've done a lot of the meditation techniques. I've learned a lot of different things that were that I thought were bringing me closer. And, Sure. Uh, the one guy that helped me wake up to Torah, he is into that, um, sadly. He, he grew up Orthodox um, Jew, which they, right. they study that more than Torah, actually, the Kabbalah and the rabbis. Mm -hmm. um, but he then became Christian, and then he became LDS because he could see the Book of Mormon is what it claims to be. But he does do some of these meditations and other Kabbalah mm -hmm. stuff and he says he gets good fruits from it I we disagree and we butt heads on that one so we don't do too much together anymore sadly but I do appreciate the help that he gave me initially yeah Rob K uh, yeah I wasn't going to call him out but yeah that's him yeah I, I mean I like a lot of his I, I like a lot of the insights on, on his videos and I, I, I get, some, I get some things from him. I, I like some things from him because on some of the just. But I don't Hebrew really. Depend, stuff, I, I, I like, don't depend on. I don't depend on any man for doctrine. Oh no, no. Um, but in some of his videos, he does uh, teach Kabbalah at times, and in some of his blog posts too. But um, it, it was good. He helped me initially, so I appreciate that. That's for sure. Yep. There it is. Um, so, anyways, we just we don't get along too much anymore because of disagreement on the Kabbalah and cult and its source and the the fruits of it. Yeah. Um, so, anyways, and so that and so that yeah that was I think we've I think we've looked at Daniel eleven well enough. I think we know yeah. where it is. Uh, there's some more, but it's late enough that it's probably yeah. I think we I think we know where it fits in the lexicon of prophecy now. Yeah, and, and we did start seeing a chiasm. It would be interesting to to that out a little bit. Yeah, fill it out more. Um, mm -hmm. I, I'm busy on other ones, so you can do that one. <laughs> All righty, I'll take a, I'll take, I'll take a, I'll take a crack at that. <laughs> but yeah, I, you know, I think that it's actually important that we understand how things play out in the end times? Um, I, um, not, not to the point where we, not to the point where it's more important than obeying the law. Yeah, I was going to say because that. I, otherwise, because, because otherwise, because otherwise you're going to end up knowing how it works out, you'll end up on the wrong side of it anyway. Uh, right. And you might think you have it figured out and you actually don't. 
and right. you lose your faith. Because, in, well, in order to truly understand the prophecies, you have to understand the law. Right. And um, was it Second Nephi 32 talks about how um, until you start keeping the law, you're not going to get more. And prophecy is a step beyond that. Right. And then in Second Nephi 25, uh, Nephi talks about how unless you have the spirit of prophecy, uh, you're not going to understand these things. And that's after you really start striving to keep Torah. Um, so I honestly believe the key is uh, come under Yeshua's authority and learn who he is and how he acts by studying Torah and then be apply that in your life so you can become like him okay. and that you'll recognize him when he comes and, and that and that, and that is all the deception when it comes right and uh, also that putting yourself under putting yourself under yeshua's authority is also the key to all spiritual gifts yes Just to tie in what we were talking about earlier at the very beginning Coming under Yeshua's authority is also the key to all spiritual gifts. Yeah, because they come from him. And unless you acknowledge him and striving to do his will, um, he's not going to give you more other than the, the basic. There, uh, that you, there will be, there are plenty, there are, there are a few entities, there are entities that are willing to give you more for nothing. Well, apparently. I don't know about nothing. Well, just I, for your I, I think they'll give you just some samplings soul. and then convince you to do some bad things to get you to get more for your, for your um, soul. Yeah, yeah, they're 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 going after your soul and they're going to deceive you to do some bad things. Um, mm -hmm. So that they may initially give you something for. for I, I don't know if I'd call it free, but they're doing. Yeah, it. it's like a drug dealer giving you a sample for free. It's not free. Yeah, it's. That's exactly how it is because um, when because I'm sensitive to I've always been uh, to the spirit world. Satan used that against me and gave me certain things to believe that um, a president of the church was called of God and he was in heaven having his party and with the angels and all these things and and then it was about Hinckley. Oh, okay okay so uh, i'm not gonna go into it because it will take too long but basically it was just a dream that was very real um that was in a uh like a garden place outside and um i started hearing um a bunch of um uh, tabernacle choirs um singing but in a language that i couldn't understand and then in the dream i'm saying oh my mom because my mom would turn on the the um, tabernacle choir to clean the house. <laughs> that was her oh, her bell. Oh, okay. bell and, and clean, um, which you know that that was her cleaning music back then. She doesn't do that anymore. But um, so in my dream, I'm like, oh, I better get up and help my mom. And then um, I get up, I wake up, and then. Something was like, hey, turn on the TV. And then I turned on the TV because all before that I had heard the, the, the choirs, right? And they were like, ah, and I was still, and I woke up and I was still hearing the choirs, okay? And they were kept going. The notes, you know, were endless. And, you know, it, it sounded just like a Mormon tabernacle choir, but but thousands of them. Okay. And then um, it was when Hinckley passed away. I turned on the TV, he had passed away. And I'm like, and I was kind of confused, like, well, what, what does that mean? Like, and then my brain was like, oh, that, I just, oh my goodness, I just listened to his party up there because he oh. made it and he talked to God. And yeah. I'm in the right church and all this stuff. And oh my goodness, you know what I mean? So he does do that. And I had another dream with Jesus Christ, and it was terrifying. He put me in my place that I woke up 
uh, oh my goodness. You know what I mean? It, mm -hmm. I knew it was him. So this is, I, I'll go really quickly. The dream was I was in a movie theater. I was in the middle top. Um, it was a round movie theater. When the movie theater um, went down, um, the lights, all of a sudden, the top of the movie theater came out. Okay. And it was a really big uh, noise. <coughs> and it was and then I see, and everybody's running away because there was this horrible, terrifying fear. And then I look up and I see this man sitting on a white throne, wearing white, white beard, white hair, just looking at me. And the way he was looking at me, like he wasn't disappointed, but he was just like looking at me like, what are you doing type of deal? But at the same time, like. I don't know, but it, it was so powerful that I hid under the movie chair and I was begging it to please. I said, destroy me right now. I'm not worthy to be in the presence. Destroy, put rocks on top of me. I, I want to be destroyed. Please destroy me. I was begging to be destroyed. I woke up with my heart beating out of my chest. And every time I tell this, my heartbeat starts going fast. I start to sweat. I go right back to that dream. So that's how I know that dream came from God because at that time I was sinning really, really bad. And my mom was praying for me and God listened to her prayer and was like, hey, you better stop. I didn't stop right away, but then I did. And then I started to find, the, you know what I mean? Uh, and reading sure. the Book of Mormon myself, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, well, that sounds like the, it sounds like the fear of the wicked at the time of Christ's coming. Yeah. There's um, nowhere to run, nowhere to hide. Who are you wow. going to pray to? You I, know? I think it's in Helaman. It even uses the same imagery of hiding under a rock. Maybe Helaman 5 yeah. or 13. I, I'd have to look, but. Um, and asking and asking and uh, asking in the revelation it talks about the wicked will ask for to death. be destroyed rather than and isaiah talks about how the how the people how the wicked will want the rocks to cover them and the uh yeah um which is interesting because it has uh multiple meanings to it but yeah um yeah for one it's stoning. <laughs> right. <laughs> and two, it's being covered by the Messiah. Mm -hmm. To be covered right. by the Messiah. So depending if you're righteous or wicked. right? So the whole thing is, is that if... If, you've, if you feel the fear, it means that you're not yet covered by the rock. I would agree with that. If you feel the fear, it's because you're not yet covered by the rock and have need yes, to repent. Exactly. At that at that time, mm -hmm. and I'm so fearful, but I'm more fearful of God mm -hmm. than anything in this world because of that dream. So that means I'm still needing, right? To there's still we all still need to repent. Yes. Oh yeah, we all still um, need to repent. I, and there's I, not I know a, there's, I'm not perfect yet. Although it's there's not a one of us who should not be a, who there's not a one of us I think who should not be afraid to actually be in the presence of God. Yeah. Because we and are why, we yeah, are that's all why, sinners. That's well, why I stopped a lot of the things that I used to do and think it was right. A lot of the ways I used to think, which Man, I, I was a really wicked person. I'm a, like, if I were to talk to myself now compared to back then, I would be like, man, that girl, she doesn't know what is going on. Like, she's, she's lost. Like, she, she claims Jesus, but she's sitting here taking shots. You know, it's like, it, it, it was, I was a complete hypocrite, you know, and even though well, I would pray, um, we're all taught me. by false preachers and have been deceived. Um, so yeah, and we're, so we're, I, I, we're all hypocrites. 
<laughs> yeah, that's uh, try my for sure compared to our past. Hopefully, we're right. not now, right? Yeah. Um, yeah. Well, hopefully, we're trying to come out of it. Yeah, uh, and so this leads I, me I to, to okay. more, more than this leads me to the question that happened today. Okay, that we were talking about how God um, will bless us spiritually, but not physically. You said. Um, I no, there no. There's nothing that God gives that is purely physical. Right. I think that's more. In fact, I, I can. Okay. That's more to the effect. Okay, so I'm going to share something with you guys. Okay. Okay. Do you want hey. me to uh, pause the recording? Yes. Yes, please. Okay. okay. It's just the way yeah. you said it made me think I needed. So hold. Yeah, I was going to ask that. By the way, thank you, 